That's true. Oh, well. <laughs> Let's try this for a second. <laughs> that didn't pop up uh, and another class act on his way folks oh, really? because i'm like thinking well i hope it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't work and i'm not and eating banana now i'm fine you forgot again the mic on top of it well obviously somebody forgot to share the screen and i was eating <laughs> banana online so i don't know which is worse oh uh, we're off to a good start tonight folks <laughs> this is just unreal. Unreal. Oh, this is so phenomenal. Oh, okay, good. I thought I cut us off for some. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, no, you know what? No, no, no. We're starting over. We're okay. starting over. Enough of this. Take we're, we're, two. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm just got a contrariness now. There, and I hit record right away, so everything's off to a good start. <laughs> That's right. Zen. So we weren't here. None of this happened. Scooby Doo effect, like on Wayne's World. All righty then. Share screen. Open this puppy up and let's go. Yeah, we're at the very good start. I we, think we're uh, not going to do the take. Yeah, break. I think it's time we just leave. <laughs> I think it's time for somebody else to take over. <laughs> what is going on tonight? Um, oh, my God. You know, the best part of it is that that chat is so nonchalant about all this. I know, I know. They're like, <laughs> ah, they're, they're screwing it all up again. What else is new? <laughs> this is like the worst start ever. <laughs> and I mean, we have some pretty bad ones to compare it to. Oh. Uh, there we Thank go. Thank you for coming to our Crazy Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Uh, Push Studios is in here. Melissa gets a, we've got to give Melissa a moderator. She deserves it uh, over putting up with this stuff. Hello, yeah. hello, and we apologize for uh, oh my God, oh for my. our extra, extra <laughs> different, <laughs> twice different uh, uh, intro, yep. Jay. But you got a special meeting banana. And I don't then know you why. Oh, I know what happened. I went. For that bar that says uh, you're sharing screen, mm -hmm. I clicked that off and I went to get rid of it instead of just getting rid of the bar. Well, that's good. Well, now we know. Oh, my and now God. You know who... Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cat's out of the bag, folks. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, was, that was funny. So... Oh, Camaro Time, we're doing absolutely fabulous. And how are you doing today? <laughs> As you can tell, everything's just going spot on. No hiccups yet. Oh, knock, it was knock so on funny. wood. I'm like, oh, thank God we're not live yeah. now because I was still eating my yeah. supper snack. Rob Hoffman, you might want to find another channel to join tonight for your Savior YouTube channel. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Uh, Raven Rain Books, uh, congratulations. <coughs> 1K reached yesterday. So just Excellent. a special round of applause for you tonight. Um, before we move on, uh, very well deserving. So um, congratulations on that. I'm so glad tonight we got more ladies in the place. This is great to see. I love that. Well, Rob Hoffman is getting mm -hmm. on as our special guest yeah, tonight. Exactly. And I think uh, any lady loves a guy going to tickle the, the ivory. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's why we have those ladies in tonight. So, let's see. We got Beauty and Deborah. Welcome. Welcome. So amazing to have you again. Camaro Time, of course, the man himself. Oh, Coriolis Effectment. Hey, how you doing? I hope the missus with you as well, or she might be here as well in the list. I'll check. 
Uh, my sister, Jody B. Welcome. And it's really great having Jody coming in so much in the live streams and that. I tease yeah, her, but it really does mean a lot. It, yeah. You know. And I mean, our audience enjoys her too. I think. Oh, yeah. Jorge humor. People like little people. They always find the Oh, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right. no. After the start like this, we <laughs> just can't afford thing. Like Melissa O'Brien, I believe I have uh, given you the wrench. Welcome, by the way. So good to have you here. Obi Scott, good to have you, my friend. Uh, we met in, well, he's been here before, but we met, I believe it was Craft Beer Pours. I think he was on that night on one of their live streams the first time we met. Panic D videos. How you doing, my friend? Hello, hello. You're going to have your own live stream tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Uh, the other day they, they posted a tweet about it, and it was 23rd of May, and they said, the live stream is on, 22nd of May. And I couldn't stop teasing them about uh, going back to the future. No. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot to talk about after tonight. Because <laughs> the live stream is tomorrow. Yeah. But uh, I loved it. I, th I thought it was part, part of a, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. Part of a trick. I thought they did it on purpose, actually. Like our trick tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Cockram. How you doing, my friend? What's cooking? Welcome. Tonight? The Canadian man is in the house. Raven Rainbrooks of books, of course. We spoke a while ago. So happy for you once again. Congratulations. The man himself, the man of the hour, the man that will be our, our guest tonight, Rob guest. Hoffman. Good to have you, my friend. T Throg. Always amazing to have you. So happy you're here. And Terrell the original, our original wrench girl. <laughs> that sets the tone for everybody else. So you all get wrenches, but she makes she calls the shot. So you got to be good to her. She's yeah. rough and she's tough. And <laughs> she's got a, a ninchy 300 time out finger. So <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming. And for those who are behind the chat as well, yep. uh, leave a hi if you can. If not, it's okay. Just listen to us. So. Enjoy if you guys can tweet it out, it is always greatly appreciated. It really means a lot. <laughs> my sister, all that old chestnut, bro. <laughs> Just showing you the respect you deserve, my dear. Uh, yeah, just smash that share button. And oh. if you are lazy, then just go to our <laughs> Twitter account and reshare uh, one of our numerous tweets about this stream tonight. <laughs> um, and if you're too lazy to do that, well, that's okay too. <laughs> Panic D videos, by the way, do you guys offer attendance certificates? Yeah, we Should. Can start. After tonight, you are a tough, uh, you're, you're a strong group, so I appreciate you. Yeah. You're devoted. And, uh, we are duty... official uh, para peeps for Panic D. Yeah. So maybe we should uh, come up with something. You survived the push alive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <You> sur <laughs> survive. <laughs> Survival. That's our test. That's why we do it at the beginning to see who's really strong enough to be in here. So. Hashtag live with Pusha Survivor. Hashtag Beauty and the Bird loved our Scooby Doo beginning. Thank you so much. Everybody remembers that one from, of course, Scooby Doo, but Wayne's World. So, uh, Terrell's welcoming everybody as she always does with such grace. Our the lad himself, we'll call him like they used to call Benny Hills. That's what we're gonna call him from now on. The lad himself, the Donnie Shell Show. Yeah, I like that. That's the sticking. lad himself. Yeah, I like that. See, we have individual certificates we could come up with. That's like right. Terrell the originals and the lad himself. That's true. You know, we'll, we'll work on them. We're getting there. <laughs> and Donnie wants attendance one as well. Irvin to pay tourists is here. How are you, my friend? Where are you at? What is Jacques Papin meal? Is it the joke that I'm not getting, or what, what is it? What Pops is making a, uh, his girlfriend is cooking a Jacques Papin meal. Wasn't he like uh, did uh, food? Is it all that uh, food? Uh, yeah, like an older one. Pie. Is it he's, he's a cook. He's a cook. Uh, eat uh, food uh, in Jacques Pepin fast food. My uh, my way. The man who taught millions of Americans how to cook. Share this. What stuff. exactly is it? He's a cook. He's a cook. I'm no, showing you right but here. What is the meal? Meal. Oh. I know the cook. I just wanted to know what meal is. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I somehow thought it would be a seafood pie or something. I don't know why. I would love to come to England. Again. Yes. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> We would love to come to England. You're going to have to work with the tourism board and get us over and tell them it would be great coverage and say they have an amazing channel with absolutely astonishing openings and they'll bring us here in no time, all paid. So, Yeah, uh, we'd love to mm. and probably uh, in the soon future, Ooh. actually. It's very, very, very tangible. Pork chops, asparagus, bistro potatoes. Mm. 
Nice. That sounds good. Andrew today uh, did a nice surprise. I was sleeping a lot today because it's it's humid today. It was. <laughs> now it's going to be raining. Mm -hmm. But it was humid. It was plus 32 or something like that. So I was sleeping. And while I was sleeping, Andrew cooked supper. Uh, some great ribs and uh, potatoes. Yep. Sliced potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, slow cooked ribs. <laughs> delicious. It was a very nice surprise. So. Now you see, Georgie doesn't want me making short jokes, and she wrote uh, at Pucha Studios, if you go to the UK, I'm hiding in your suitcase. She's not helping her cause much. Oh, we should go, girl. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I take you and Audrey and Chris. <laughs> they got a reduction for child fares. Yeah. Oh, that's okay, Irving. You're together, back together with your family. So, uh, oh, oh God. Time. Sorry, I read Coriel Blackman's comment. I'm scared, blind wife <laughs> handles knife, lol, to cut potatoes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, let us know uh, if you have any meat in those tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in case of emergency, just say uh, 911. And Donnie, that's very sweet of you. Um, and I don't know if you dare to write that because we might actually take you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might show up baggage in hand. Because yeah. out of all locations, you probably are the, the most, yeah. you know, uh, real one that we could actually be in, like this summer. That's so, right. So uh, yeah. I wouldn't be throwing this out just yeah. because. It'd be the four of us and my sister. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah, that might actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. That's uh, very sweet of you. <laughs> uh, it'd be like the Ch Chevy Chase and National Euro Lampoon's European Vacation. Oh my to, God! Yes. Where they go to Germany to stay at the wrong house the whole time. <laughs> I, I love National Lampoon's. All all of the movies with them. Oh but you had never seen them until you came over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it and was, now it's like the mm, top movies, the top mm, comedy. Just love it. It is. They don't make good comedy. You haven't like heard any screams yet. Yeah. Well, you know what they say: if it's too quiet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I would be go checking because um, I worry more about this one with knives, and she's got twenty twenty. So, yeah. Even our daughter and our son worry about her, and they have to have talks with her. But when she has a knife in her hand, yeah, mommy, do you, are you sure that you want to use these scissors? <laughs> yeah, well, it's are you true. sure? <laughs> be careful, mommy. Don't cut yourself. It's like genuine concern. Not yeah, that's even what pretend. I get from our uh, yeah. well, eleven-year-old and seven-year-old now. But the first started when our son was five, mm -hmm. and yeah, he was saying, "Mommy, mommy, be careful." Well, when he's seen mommy every time she makes supper, come away with a wrap around her thumb or finger, <laughs> kind of get him. For you. And yeah. I would say I'm a good cook. Okay, I will pass <laughs> on. But uh, I'm well, not a sous chef. I'm, I can't. Uh, mm -mm. The prepping part is not mm -mm. on my side. Mm -mm. <laughs> Unless finger counts as prep. Donnie says, I've got room in my garage for you guys to stay in. Well, oh. I think we're up for that. The, the grass outside is good, too. Uh, you know, we're not... Uh, the car that we arrive in is also good. That's what we usually do. <laughs> Use rubber knives, Donnie said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Donnie, you're, you're, you're a character. I, I'm going to tell you that I, the, my last uh, major cut was me washing a jar, uh, a mason jar. Yeah, uh, Which ended nice. up of uh, me being in an uh, emergency and my fingers sliced uh, open. That was a bad one. That was a real bad one. Like, mm -hmm. the blood was everywhere. <laughs> and yeah. you brought me to emergency and then came back to the uh, apartment to clean up the blood that was spattered all oh, across it looked like the mur It looked like a murder scene. <laughs> Right, it's like CSI. Yeah. So I yeah. was flushing it, and then I don't know, it fell, and and the big, big, uh, thick slice just went and sliced right through. I still have it's one of those old time mason jars, the, the yeah. high ones with the thinner glass that's just like shrapnel when they break. Yeah, one yeah. Of those. And then we went to the emergency, and the surgeon there, uh, he had to obviously put stitches on, like eight stitches or something, but he actually stitched me to the paper that was <laughs> underneath. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty, he was a pretty competent guy. <laughs> yeah. Always good to have a surgeon like that. Uh, that, that was fun. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that was my latest. Uh, but that's just one of uh, all the accidents that I've had in the <laughs> kitchen. So. Yeah. Uh, you have Apache grass area. Works. Works for us. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Did I make the brownies? No. No. I actually we just got flour the other day. I was on sale. Anybody in Montreal? Uh, 
or in Quebec. Mm. Um, oh, Bushcrafter Channel. Welcome. Good to have you back. You get a wrench right away. There you go. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're glad you didn't miss it, too. It's a pleasure to have you here. Donnie's, uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Donnie's wearing a flameproof bubble wrap and and mittens with a bike helmet at work. Wow. Wow. That's covering all your bases. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going around here. He must have watched a YouTube video on how to do stitches. Well, I don't know what he watched. He probably didn't watch even that because that was quite a quite a butcher yeah. job there. Uh, yeah, the one who was taking it after out, like they didn't understand what was really <laughs> done there. It was very butchered. Uh, yeah, yeah um, he was a hero, all right. Yeah, but uh, it, it still hurts sometimes. So it's funny how these deep, deep cuts. Uh, you know, it's been a couple of months, but it still, still hurts. So, um, now, I wanted to do a special shout out today and uh, a little talk with you guys. <laughs> now, we so get excited every time we do see a shout out video for us. Yes. Um, or a, like Follow Friday, for example, on Twitter uh, when we get a tag. Um, so we really love seeing them. The thing is that sometimes people, unfortunately, don't tag us in that or don't send us a message that they have did the shout out video and therefore we never see it. So today I found four different shout out videos from a while ago that we never even seen before. Um, and I just wish to say that if you do, we're very thankful. Please message to us if you did or tag us on Twitter so we know that it's there so we can see it say thank you and tweet it out. So today's special thank you goes to Russ 100, who did uh, a shout out. A Polynesian vlogger did a 1500 shout out. Yeah. Say a special thank you when he comes in today. <coughs> uh, Re Ravenna Rail fan did a shout out as well. And Double G Gaming. Um, some of them are as older as like beginning of April. Yeah. So we we really, really appreciate. Thank you, all of the guys that I just mentioned. And please, if you do, please tag us in so we can say thank you. Definitely, because we definitely want to thank you guys for that. It's truly appreciated. It's such an honor to have something like that. And it's the only way for us to know it did happen. Yeah. So, you know. But we will keep our eyes out and we'll keep watching to see if we run into them, but please do. Cause we definitely want to thank you right away for what you've done. So it's, it's, it's so important because you've thought of us, the least we can do is thank you. And at the time you've done it. Exactly. So. Um, Donnie was at the hospital once where a nurse kept stabbing him an arm. <laughs> I said, why you give no blood? <laughs> well, uh, and Coriolis almost lost a finger doing a heat sink mod. Oh, it's actually on a video. Well, I'll check that out. Um, yeah. Well, for so. those of you who are new uh, in the chat or behind it, um, our intro sentence, we are a husband and wife team making videos and photos at the same time getting up close and personal uh, with YouTube creators from all around the world. Every night from Monday to Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we are here on I would push out with our special guest and awesome to end the chat. And today You're doing is so our great. Friday Night Lights. I've just been listening to you. With <laughs> our special guest, Rob Hoffman. He is a musician. Uh, he is a piano player. He is a home builder. He's got everything going, this guy. Yeah. He's the jack of all trades. Yeah, very, very happy to have him on. Uh, as I said yesterday, it, He's a classic values guy. Yes. Uh, so we are very honored to have him on tonight and on our Friday Night Lights. And guys, there's some new ones in, some from around from a bit. Anybody new that you haven't checked out yet? You pretty much have a seal of approval if they're in here. And they especially if they have a blue wrench, you're more than safe for having a good follower. So definitely check each other out. Like you said, it's not the goal of this place, but it's a good uh, byproduct. <clears throat> to anybody new, we had one person in the I say like they sub thing, and that was the first time I think in like three weeks we've had somebody like you know, yeah, sub you, sub you. And we don't need to kick anybody out or be nice to them, just give them a friendly reminder to just sit back and enjoy the show and get to meet everybody, and they'll get 
lots of good people will definitely be checking them out. Just uh, no need to hustle them, and we don't want to be too hard with the axe. So, uh, by the way, uh, for you guys, have you noticed that there's an update on YouTube? Uh, well, if you haven't, uh, just a note once again, <laughs> a news update on YouTube. Here, I'll share it. Uh, there is a, oh, I have a. Uh, yeah, but do you want to? Oh, you want to show? You want to show them how? I thought yeah, that, that would, would be know. great. Okay, I uh, just forget why it doesn't go to it right away. So you have to go. Yeah. So uh, the new YouTube update is that they have added a messenger feature now. Uh, you can, you know, chat with people privately or add people to conversation. Or if you see a video and you want to share it with somebody, you can actually directly do that. But in order to do that, you have to have them added as your contacts or your profile. And to do that, I don't know why that is so complex. Yeah, I know, me neither. As to to this do guy. that, you need to have that person's link. Okay, so our link, if you want to add us to your contact, is this. So what you do is uh, you click on it, you add it to your contacts, and then if you have something that you want to share with us or you just want to say hi, uh, you do the same as you would do on Facebook or... Uh, yeah. Well, it, yeah, it kind of looks like a Facebook. Right over messenger. here, just by your bell, you're going to see messages. You click onto it. And there you are. So there's Rob right here, for instance, Rob Hoffman. So we just click on there and let's see. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it works. So yeah, it's the standard pretty much as any other social media message system. So, and that's cool. They're adding it, but the setup is really. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why maybe they're going to change it after. So yeah. So if you want to invite uh, somebody you or you want people let let people know you got to get your youtube uh, messenger link and then uh send it on twitter to somebody that you want to add or like today uh we put, put a post up um so anybody that wants you can type us. hi rob <laughs> still running as a demo so don't be shy he started to type and then he stopped <laughs> so I just don't, i'm not going to send you the link in here i'll send it in twitter in a minute but <laughs> yeah so uh, please that's our link earlier that i posted uh, if you want to get in touch with us uh, then i think the more neat feature is that you can share the videos directly so if you come upon something that is oh oh you know i thought of uh, um i don't know a joey for example oh mm. i would really want you to see this video so instead of going and resharing and twitter and all that yeah you can just directly basically send it uh through YouTube. or for us once they're set up like because right now we have to send the link through twitter and that it's yeah. a great place to send it we're going to do it through twitter or actually no i'm not sure so yeah rob i'm going to send you the link now and uh, is there any other news before we go on home no uh that's it that's all the updates for today okay then I'm going to send it to you, Rob, in Twitter. Enough uh, the Facebook Messenger. Let's try it right now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so who, a hey, Joey. I'd uh, like to say hello to Rob, who has been a great supporter since he opened his channel. So much respect. Great guest. Thank you. That's so true. And you're out for dinner. So enjoy your Friday. And be careful there. Oh, he sent uh, uh, Philip. He said it's, uh, it's not a shout out, but I do mention you and thank you both in this video. So we're going to have to watch that. Well, there you go. Thank you for letting us know. Yes, God. I mean, you're so nice to do that. We definitely want to thank see Thank you it. so much. Yeah. You guys put work on it, you know, and, and then we would love to see it. Yeah. Um, too complicated. Yeah, I know. I know. Yep. I know. It's it's so basically what you do is just you click on that arrow on the, um, you know, right. Um, corner mm -hmm. and um then just <laughs> it's just go from it, there it's the adding is complicated I don't that's know what's why they so weird that link thing uh, it's so ridiculous but anyways yeah. i think they did it to try and control the messaging system in here so it doesn't get hacked so but still it's kind of pointless anyways you guys got the link so yeah if you guys can click onto it and just add us that'd be great especially anybody who's coming up in the near future because we'll start using that as much as possible to send the link over for the yeah uh cali bay tv hi hello welcome back hey how are you so good to have you back yeah it worked philip thank you we will definitely check that out once again thank you for letting us know yep. about the video i hope this worked it's seen by him so we have uh sent our uh link to our special guest rob hoffman tonight and we're just gonna wait and see till mm. he connects to us it tells you to use a smartphone. No, you can do it on, on the laptop. We're on the laptop right now. Um, 
there was a bit of crossover problem because it was originally only available on mobile. It was only, it was used here in Canada for a bit, but I don't use the mobile much, so I never bothered with it. So there is a bit of trouble sometimes. Yeah, it, it so what is also good is that you can share your own video, video with certain group of people. For example, mm -hmm. if you want somebody, let you know, like you can add a whole bunch of people and okay, I'm going live now, for example, mm -hmm. and just shoot it out to, to your uh, closest followers, you know? Holy cow, it's humid tonight. Jay-Z yeah. with this wind. I'm going to open the... I'm gonna go it is very card. human. Oh, yeah. He's an old spotlight. Yeah. So when you go and you click on that and you click on contacts and then you uh, click on add more contacts and then it gives you the link that you copy and then you can send it to somebody that you want to add. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, <coughs> okay. You need to tweet it because it okay. doesn't uh, work on the Mac. Oh, okay. I yeah. in between. We might even have to get. Uh, if you can, if you want to, you can send me your um, your email associated with your Hangouts. Yeah, just too. send it uh, at the same time, just in case it yeah. doesn't work. But uh, yeah, send it by Twitter. Maybe it works better there because it's of Mac. <laughs> it told you on the phone too earlier. Yeah, well, they just added it, so it um, probably has some bugs still. Like sometimes with the laptop here, sometimes it is there and sometimes it's not. I don't really understand why. But... Uh -huh. YouTube keeps turning my bells off. Yes, that's why we always say if you want us to see your videos, message us or tag us in a Twitter. Yeah. Because um, that just happened can't... today. I was in a chat talking to somebody and I felt bad, but it happened. <clears throat> Especially because there are two of us and Xenia must add it was a cooking channel. And I said, I added you, and they're like, she's like, well, you already did before. And I'm like, I'm sorry, the, the button was red, and sometimes my wife does that, and they're all add ones she doesn't know about. So yeah. I'm quite understanding, but I've had some flip out before. Yeah. Oh, flip an epic. Excellent. Good to have you back. Welcome. Perfect. Well, thank you. Perfect. You, you get a wrench. There you go. Christopher Spence. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Oh, you see, Donnie, what you got he going on to? And I did last night after we were talking, and that started happening again, but not about him. But it's just, it's just the talking about British that starts coming back. And it is awful. It does sound like Benny Hill acting like an old woman. It's not a pleasant version of the boy. I just was glad that he said that he does it when he goes to other areas in England and that, so it didn't make me feel so bad. It's yeah. contagious. It's out of love. It is. <laughs> oh, okay, Rob. No problem. I send it to you in Twitter, but I'm going to send you it this way here because I've heard with if somebody's using a Mac, this is the better way. Oh, another great feature of this I see. It doesn't hold for you to be able to copy, so I'm going to have to hold it probably in Control C and hope this works. Let's see here. Oh, there he is. Oh, you're hiding on me. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Oh, uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, no. uh, we can't hear. Yeah. Silence. <laughs> you guys can still hear us, right? And he's not. He's not. Uh... Okay. Good. We're just going to give Rob a second here, and uh, we'll just keep on chatting away with you guys, because you guys are always great to talk to. Oh, he probably has to restart. The joy is alive, right, guys? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's all good. This stuff happens, and uh, we'll get him up in no time. So uh, is there any other news, honey, you want to talk about? Uh, no, that was like uh, YouTube always comes up with something, you know, uh, like I was talking yesterday about, about changing the uh, timeline, you know, the way it appears. Uh, we haven't noticed yet with ours. So if you do with yours, just let us know. It's just interesting if it's going to uh, become a permanent feature or not. Um, yeah, and in, UK, in the US, they're having Memorial Weekend. Can you guys hear Rob? Maybe it's us. I don't think so. No, we're running through loud. That's weird. They can? I don't know. I'm asking. Can't hear you, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny. <laughs> um, 
Um, what was it? I can't. No, I can't hear because I'm listening now to the uh, live So you can't hear us either. I can hear us. I can't hear uh, oh, Rob. No one is hearing Rob. A silent Rob. Um, <laughs> Jeez, very funny, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> I would assume that you have to adjust your setting for the uh, for the mic in, yep. in in your computer. Do you have your mic? Uh, do you have it muted? Like uh, the mic is red by any chance up above on the screen for Hangouts? Push, yeah, push and silent, Rob. We could try sign language. I don't know how good I am at it, but I just know the bad words. I think. Let's see. I would. I would assume it have to be. Um, it have to be signed in again, like a signed microphone, probably again or something on the computer. You said maybe. that you had to re restart uh, your computer earlier and your internet, so maybe that's the. Because yeah, we're not showing anything on the monitor side here. Ours is showing okay. And you're sure up, like I say, up on top of the Google's Hangout screen, you don't have the mic read it out? Well, uh... If you go to settings on your computer and look for the microphone... Uh... Yeah, because he's working on mic, so it's... Uh, I would... I'm yeah, kind but... of forgetting now to tell them where to go for those settings. That's why before I can tell you're all ready to cut me off. I can, I can tell. Or just restart the computer. I don't I know. I think that's what he's going to do. I think. I believe. Well, he'll be back in a second. So. So, guys, what are your plans for the long weekend? For those of you who are in yes. states, you're having Memorial Weekend. We or... had our long weekend last week, and of course, Victoria Day to celebrate the Queen's birthday. Yeah. You guys have Memorial Day this weekend. So, our son is going to be out of town. Oh, I see a picture. Gremlins, yeah. Oh, he's back. Uh, this is so weird. Yeah, it's something on the computer on his side. So, uh... I'm not sure. That's really. You're on call. Oh, that's too bad. That's that's not good. I uh, hope at least it pays well for you being on call. It, uh, but I guess, uh, what do you do, by the way, Flumming? Oh, you're going on a hike? Excellent. So That's I guess cool. we're going to see some new footage coming up in the next couple of days. I love the Bushcraft uh, group. Like, yeah, they are so, channels, yeah. so supportive of each other and in a good way. Like, in a really, it's just nothing but positive all the time. Uh, really impressive. Can you hear me now? Yay! We can hear them. You're my alive. USB, my USB microphone does not like Google Hangouts. Oh, oh no! But we so, can hear you very clearly. So I'm glad because I feel like I'm in a tin can. Oh. <laughs> no, it's it. It sounds great. No, it so. does. It sounds good. We can yeah. hear you loud and clear. It's great. good that we can hear you. <laughs> Uh, how are you doing tonight besides my well you're gonna start off the same way we start off at the beginning with it. <laughs> so we had an epic intro tonight <laughs> well my, i've had a day um i don't have any permits so i have contractors ready to dig a hole and uh i'm not going to get a hole dug oh, oh no. no that's too bad wasn't your date the 30th Water. so it's going to be postponed it'll be june 6th now Okay. Mm, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, this is the fifth time it's been pushed out. Why so? Paperwork issue type of thing? or? Well, it started off with the guy we got to take down the trees that didn't take down the trees. There, it, to build a house, there's a, you know all kinds of red tape to go through. Right. And when you get the first person involved and they think – they're the only person out there, and when they're done, everything else just happens. Right. Not realizing you have to apply for permits, you have to have the survey done, you have, you know, 15 things has to happen. Yes, and they're all in a chain of succession. Yes, and, you know, but we're down now to where it's the city's fault. Oh, my God. That's so that's good. That's not my fault. Yeah. That's no, good. but it's still you're the one who has to deal with all the mess and, and re rescheduling all these things. So still sucks, but. 
Well, when, when you, we've got the pros in now, this is not their first rodeo and they told me this was going to happen. Oh, okay. you, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. I live in the city that has, you all know how government workers can work. Yeah. <laughs> they sometimes, uh, Make sure that nobody gives them any more work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think the guy that does the permits, that's where he's at. Everywhere else around us, you can get your permits in two or three days. Here, it's a minimum of three weeks. That's the sad part about that, too, like as it goes by, like I guess for you guys, more county by county, I'm assuming? Uh, and city by city. Okay. If I, if I did the county, it would have taken three to five days. Really? But I would have had to have had a septic tank instead of uh, connecting to the city sewer. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Trade-offs. Sewer's yeah. a lot cheaper. <laughs> yes, in the long run, as much as the yes. pain. And so, it's well, like, hope, oh, go ahead. It's, it was like $21,000 to put a compact sewage system in. Mm. Because the EPA now require, we used to be able to do a leach bed, you know, and it just would all do its thing. Right. You have to have, you have, to have the special tank and it has to biodegrade and everything else. Yeah, my father's house, like he lives in a rural area and even there they got rid of septic tanks and all the, uh, uh, like uh, the old box sewers we used to make. You know, at one time you could just make an eight by eight cedar box. Put it inside it was a rural area nobody asked questions but even there now you can't get away with it anymore like they're watching heavily well three hours away from me you can still dig a hole in the backyard and put a little house on top of it oops <laughs> so they don't need as many permits as you I, I i have relatives that still have those my great grandma had a two-seater <laughs> oh that's a good way to spend time together <laughs> <laughs> not sure why but yet that's called a positive spin. I just went on that. That's, a, that's our little <laughs> trick here. <laughs> oh, that's so, it is amazing. Eh? That's still happens sometimes. You know, people don't realize it. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I hope everything from this point gets a little more smooth sailing for you. I I, I really think we're at that point now. We yeah. it's been a great week. We went from having a bare lot to the, the stumps are all gone. The topsoil soil's gone. Uh, the driveway has been cut in. Uh, Tuesday, they'll be back. They'll be trenching for the sewage system, and they'll be putting the gravel in for the uh, drive. Excellent. So even if even if we don't start digging next week, we're going to see a lot of progress. And I love that you're documenting it right from the beginning. Like, what a great opportunity to start something like that. Well, you know, if you go in, right, <clears throat> if you don't know what you're getting into, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and that's why we're trying to share. Network. I've been real careful, and I hope it's coming off that we're sharing the adventure and not saying what we're doing because, you know, that, that's a different thing. That's for us to enjoy later. But yes, it's just we've learned so much along the way. Yeah, it's a learning experience for sure, definitely. Because you are in it up to your elbows, so there's no we way. We are. To we are. And, you know, and it, it's a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Mm. And that's uh, just like mortgages. There's yep. all kinds of construction loans, and then you, then no matter what you do, they come in and appraise it. And if yep. the house is not going to be worth it, they don't yep. give you the money. Exactly. They need the return in case you don't you yep. go belly up. You know, the, you don't want we don't want you to, but it's just a fact yep. of life in the bank. You know, they're there for a reason as well, and they're definitely good at covering themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. And we. The bank we're working with has, has been wonderful all the way through. Uh, they had a great program for us. Uh, we ended up getting 3.5% interest for 10 years. Wow. Mm. That's uh, – you, you're really at prime right there pretty much, I would assume. I don't know yes. the state. Uh, it's it's now – it's over 4% now. But when oh. we signed with the bank, it went up right after that, and uh, we were able to get that rate frozen – just long enough for us to do the closing on the loan. Okay, wow. Okay. Well, that's good, though. So we are very lucky. We fell into the lot. Uh, yeah. I went out to um, realtor.com, and I just saw the lot sitting there. It had just listed. The allotment was developed in 1957, and there were two lots that were never developed. Oh. Huh. So we got a we got a steal on them. They're larger lots. They're they're almost a half an acre each. 
Wow. And today's lots, you don't get that. And yes. uh, anyone that goes to build, you have uh, HOAs or you at least have a covenant where you have to build to specifications for the neighborhood. All of ours expired in 1980. Mm. So we are just under city rules. Okay. And so that's fantastic. That, that lets us do pretty much whatever we want to do, <laughs> which well, is great. That's and, something not many people get to say today. And yeah. Well, the one allotment we looked at, we had to have a stone home. And that's oh, 60, yeah. that's like sixty thousand dollars more. Why well, easily. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that makes it a little cost prohibitive. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, I'm glad you locked out with where you got and everything. It looks like a beautiful area. And it is. It is. We were back there tonight, and uh, the trees in the back are filling back in now, and nice. it's going to feel like we are backed into a woods. So it's it's going to mm. be a very beautiful home when we're done. It's going to be very comfortable, at least from the back end. Well, I'm very happy for you. It's a great reward in life to have a place like that to call it your is. own. I don't know if you, because uh, I know you're here a good bit, but I don't know if you had heard. Uh, I want to show you. I have a cousin who uh, passed away, and uh, he left me his house and his will. So we just became homeowners the other week. Out of wow. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. So it was kind of unexpected, but uh, this is our house here. And that's the back. And there's the front of the house. So it's a four bedroom house. And oh, wow. Know, yeah, he left the truck. He built a new garage tw about 20 by 36 five years ago. It was brand new. He put, he just redid the house about maybe eight years ago. And uh, yeah, my parents called me. They were the executor of the will, but they couldn't tell me until all the searches were done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, wow, so yeah, that, that's really cool. Yeah, it was a surprise. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, and that's a gift. That's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it was. It was very kind of him. And a quick, quick side story. The guy was with a woman. They dated. They, we all grew up in this small town. He dated this woman. They went their separate ways. She married, and they both moved to Ontario. They never seen each other much for until he retired and moved home. Her husband passed away. She moved home, and they ended up getting married. After all those years, because he never married, he stayed single the rest of his life till he wow. got back with her. And then a couple of years later, she got cancer and unfortunately passed away like seven years later. And after she was gone, I don't think he was too uh, keen on being around. So he, like, he was sick and he wasn't too worried about, you know, he wasn't rushing to the doctor every day to get yeah, advice. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, it was a sad thing, but it was also I think he's happier now, and it was awfully nice of him to think of us. So yeah. Oh, when is uh, the plan for your house to be uh, finished? Well, originally July. We're oh. looking at September now. That's still not too too bad. I mean, I, I would like really to be in quickly. as soon as possible, but well, no. See, this this is Mr. Tightwad talking. School is just getting out, and I write, I currently have a three-bedroom house in a nice neighborhood that it's three-quarters paid for, okay. uh, which is why I can afford to build the house <laughs> anyway. I want to sell it while school's out because I'll get more money for it with parents wanting to buy. Uh, it's going to work out now. I won't be able to put it up for sale until school starts. I so, can't so. Uh, that sucks. And once it's sold, I'll be a happy camper again. But now I'm afraid it's going to sit on the market for two or three months, and I'll be paying two mortgages. And you know how that goes. Yeah. No, and that's not tight one. I mean, that's just yeah. fiscal sense, in my opinion. So I get where you're coming from, but you never know. Too, there might be parents trying to get into that area. And well, they've been selling in days, so I'm probably just panicking over nothing. Uh, <laughs> once you get a roof over the other place, you just sell that one and just camp it out for a little while. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. You can go to your aunt's or whoever it is that has the new cedar and stay there for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, just build a tent in a yard, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's really fast, though. I, I expected to hear like a year. Yeah, because usually sometimes those turn into real horror yeah. stories because then in the summer they're so busy and then you can't get them back for so many months. So. I, I'm glad yeah. to hear that. That's, uh, yeah, the, um, it, it, it's the, the contract we're using or the home builder, they were established in 1973. So they have it down. We actually have a 135 day guarantee. Wow. From the time they dig, start digging the hole nice. until we move in, they hand us the keys, $135, or they pay one of the mortgages until the house is uh, complete. Oh, oh wow. Well, that's good that's at least. That's a really good deal, though. Well, there, there's a cutoff, but it will pay my mortgage. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> well, that makes them want to work faster. Well, I, that's really good. I'm anxious to see <laughs> once yeah. it's done. We, I, I think we'll be, once, once that hole gets dug, I think we'll start seeing some, you know, it's going to yes. come together very quickly. I'm, I'm guessing every week or two weeks when we post a new update, it's going to be, wow. A lot has yeah. just happened here. Yeah, of course, definitely, and it's very exciting at that stage. It's like watching a baby go through the first six months of their life. You know, you're seeing changes almost daily. So it's going to be fun to see. You know, it's your dream coming true. Yes, mm. and it's been it's been fun with my mom because she keeps having ideas. Huh. <laughs> now, I wanted I wanted a door, you know, a normal door in the garage to go outside with the window in. Right. Well, she didn't think we needed the door. So now that the house, it's too late to make a change, she figured out that it's going to be dark in the garage without a window. <laughs> <laughs> She's not here, so I can pick on her a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Say you're covered, so hopefully but it, it, it's just it, it, that's a couple hundred dollars. We called them and they said, just go pick out a door and we'll charge you, but it won't be much to install it and you'll be fine, you know. Okay. But it, it's just funny some of the little things she worries about. Well, that's that's what moms do, they, they're very good at all that stuff. <laughs> the transitions, but on the floors, going from the hardwood to the um, carpet. She woke, she woke me up because she realized we chose silver. And she wanted the wood, the flat wood transitions between the floors. And you've seen them in some of the homes. So as soon as they opened, them, uh, we are over there calling, what do we do here? You know, because we do not want that. And they laughed at her and said, well, transitions to the hardwood come with matching hardwood. And the ones that are going to the to the vinyl get the silver, so you're fine. But it, it's been cute watching some of the things she thinks. Of. Well, I'm sure, she's keeping it interesting for you, and it's good that she's involved into it. She's all it is. It, well, and and nothing in this house, nothing she's wanting is major. <laughs> so yeah. it, that that makes it more fun too. It's not it's not like it's going to cost any money, no matter what we do to it. <laughs> Longer. How do you get to the compromise when you guys yeah. have two different ideas about something? Well, we have a budget, and mom is 76. And if it's in within our budget, mom gets what she wants. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, exactly. I, I really like that. <laughs> well, she gave me the master bedroom, and when you see the tour of the finished house, you will know that I got quite the gift. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever else she wants, she can have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. Well, it's amazing, and like I said, documenting I think is such an amazing idea because a lot of people don't realize just how much work goes into that. Oh it, yeah, and that's just like you know, right now I'm not sure if you folks age, but I'm at the age where you got to think about retiring. Yeah. Everything we're doing is we can either put a chair lift in to go up and down the stairs. Or we can make sure a wheelchair can get to. Yes. Right. That's Which, a good. And that's thought. you know you don't think about that. No. But I'm doing right. that. Uh, the the sunroom that we're putting on the house very well could be the mom's bedroom down the road if she gets down and can't go up and down the stairs. Exactly. And the bathroom on the first floor is large enough we can add a shower to it easy and we're having the space left for that. So if that day comes. She'll be self-contained and, you know, taken care of down there. 
and it is something. I mean, you're smart to do that because there's nothing worse than trying to renovate, like, you know, after you do it. there's It's nicer to do it right from the get-go since you have that opportunity and be ready for it because it is something that is quite inevitable, unfortunately. Yeah. But it is a part of life. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's just after losing dad, you, you really look at things in a different way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because right. right now you want to make sure that mom's life is she's happy. Yeah. Of course. And, can be. Well, I think that's great. Like the two is together, you're making that dream of uh, reality together. I think it's so nice that I really do. We're, we're having a ball. Well, that's good. That's I am nice. so glad we're getting the time together. Well, yes, exactly. That's not just building a house. It's spending time together. You know, it's the memories too that you're building with her. Oh, yeah. She has been, since dad passed away, she went on two company trips with me. So oh. she is, she's been to South Carolina. She's been to um, Arkansas. Okay. I took her to the House on the Rock in Wisconsin, which if you have never been there, anyone in America, go. Uh, I would. I, then we, would like you too. <laughs> we were there, and we were just an hour and a half from where the Pickers you know, oh. were. Oh. Okay. So we stopped there. That's tourist trap. But anyway, <laughs> it, 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 it's worth driving through the town of Leclerc. is beautiful. It's like, worth the drive to see that. If you go to see the pickers, you'll be disappointed. If you go to right. see Leclerc and then stop and see the pickers, you'll be happy. Oh, definitely. Well, we'll take that. I want to take Xenia more into the States, uh, hopefully this year. Uh, we had problems years ago with it. And it was like before, but now she's a Canadian citizen. It's so much easier to cross the border. Yeah. So now we can just pop in. Like, you know, even when we go to my parents that live in Eastern Quebec, like we could, it's a little longer. But we go through New York, go through Vermont, up through Maine, and come up through New Brunswick and go back. Oh, that would be a beautiful drive. Yeah, I mean, it's such that whole area through there. I used to see it all the time, but she's never seen – well, you've seen some of it. but Yes, Vermont. Yeah, I love New Vermont. York. Yeah, yeah, New York, yeah. Massachusetts you went to. Yeah, a little here and there. We did North Dakota when we lived in Saskatchewan for a couple of years. We went down there. So, yeah, I definitely want to let her see a little bit more of the lower 49. So Yeah, that's um... – Matter of fact, I'm hoping to get mom to Massachusetts or to Maine for her birthday in September this year so she can have lobster fresh. Oh, she loves lobster. Oh, you can't beat it. There's no other way to have it than fresh. Yes. I, I'm not trying to sound snobby, but it's once you have, you got to have it once. Okay. It, I told her, I said, it'll be fun. We'll go. It's going to be off season, so it won't be, you know, outrageously expensive to go for a couple day trip. And we're just going to go for lobster. That's so cool. Uh, can you give me some water, please? Here. Uh, sorry, we got our son that runs our alco- our beverages, not alcoholic beverages. I don't know why I said that. You, water and coffee don't exactly count. <laughs> we're, we're on the team. <laughs> we're not in first class tonight. We're in coach, so we don't get the alcohol. <laughs> but he spoils us. God love him. <laughs> it sounds that you're very good to your brother. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, as in a chat, too, people are saying it's so sweet what you're doing. It's, it is. It's really nice of you. Well, she brought me into the world and she raised me. Well, her and dad did. Mm-hmm. And you just, I don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's, exactly. That's, what you do. That's, that's right. That's how it feels from you. But I yeah. think nowadays there is, uh, you don't see it as often as we would like to. Maybe this, uh, as you just said, you know, you just do it. You don't even think about it. But it's it's hard to find people like that nowadays. So um, Yeah, it is. I, I, can, I can see, I, I feel so sorry for my generation because a lot of their children are not going to be there Mm-mm. yeah i i i, I, I hope, agree i i do hope some life-altering thing happens that pulls us back together because we need to be mm. you know I, I i've been joking for years that we need to have a so, massive solar flare that knocks our technology out for three months just to give them a little wake-up call to get back into other people. Let them go out and plant the garden and have to deal with what you got. In the, you know, this is true. It'll be a different world when the power comes back on. Yes, <laughs> a lot of life lessons in three months. We'll call it. You know, <laughs> of course, this is a gentleman that lives with Amish all around him, so we won't have to worry about food. No, you'll be so, yeah, you got you'll be laughing at the rest of the people as they're struggling to get by. <laughs> you know, so and you got your piano, and of course you can do that without the electricity. That's so right. Can, That's why so. I got one with strings. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say our kids, that's something we've really worked with. 
and I find like they're not perfect and they love their computers. Don't get me wrong, but they've been very good at. Uh, here, okay, thank you. <laughs> she keeps taking my mouse on me because I keep forgetting to switch. We're not in the car. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, I still got to control the mouse. I know. Okay. <laughs> but I do, I do try to get them to remember that there is a world away from computers, and there are people, and uh, being good to people is important, and interacting with people and helping people because it is a lesson that I think is sorely lost with today's youth not all but it is a problem for sure it is and i i just hope that it's just it's a cycle yeah uh, and none of us are 100 years old so we aren't old enough to have seen it the last time it cycled yeah yeah but but if you go back and look at some of the archive footage of the 1920s it was in some ways very much like today's society mm -hmm. Yes, there it was. was there. There was no rules, and of course, here in America, we had the um, speakeasies. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you know, uh, the drugs were flowing because they were legal at that time. So it was. I, I imagine it was that freedom existed then, and we're just seeing another level of it. It's just with social media, they they're, they're preying on the wrong emotions. Yes, and and I'm glad you brought that up too with the 1920 because that is an important. Sometimes we look at everything with uh, crystal lenses, and things weren't always like. I mean, look at all those years too. We talk about violence in video game, which is true, and pictures, but also if you see any old clippings from the 1920s, I mean, imagine what it was like to open a newspaper every day. I mean, every one of them had five bodies laying across that were gun bullet ridden, and it was a violent era. It was not. It was. You know, and like you get some of the older people, I mean, like including myself and that, all oh, back in our day. Well, it, there was times in our days where it got really violent. It, it does go through cycles and we can never forget that. Like I see a lot of young people today now are getting into container homes and mini homes and, oh, I don't want the big house that my parents had and I want to do more things. There is kind of their own revolution going on and I think they're finding a new way now to break away. They're looking at their parents sometimes more and saying, God, you're addicted to that thing. You know, they're... Their phone has almost become more of a tool to them now than a social thing. Like I go to my parents who are in their 70s, and I mean, they're addicted to Facebook, like big time. <laughs> and they used to complain about us. They are. <laughs> my mom calls that the internet. Yeah, yes, yes. She gets all of her news from the internet. And I have to keep saying, Mom, you've got to quit watching that. Because you're getting that because you clicked that one thing, and now Facebook's algorithm is going to feed <laughs> to you. <laughs> and they believe every word hook, line, and sinker. Like they do. It's scary. My father, too. Oh, my God, you're going to take an aspirin a day. Who takes aspirin anymore? Well, I see the thing on Facebook, and he said that in the aspirin. Well, don't you heard it on Facebook. So right away, you know how truthful that is. The new generation is not even on Facebook. At no, all. like uh, you know, like they don't even care to be on. Even in general, social media, Twitter is more like a news feed for them. And yeah, like sharing pictures, but it's not yeah. the same as Facebook, and they don't want to have accounts. They don't care for it. So I think there is a title shape, and we're not used to generations changing so quickly either. That's another thing too. Yes, that's true. Well, that's listening to the kids today and reading some of their comments. It cracks me up because. They expect the world to flow as fast as a tweet. Yes, definitely. Instant gratification like that. It, you know, and when you get into the bigger the the bigger the thing is, the longer it takes to happen. Yeah. And you know, snails move faster than uh, a lot of things in life right now. That's right, hundred percent. That's why. So that's why so many kids quit jobs today after two months because they're not a manager yet and they don't know why they're not getting ahead and getting, you know, X amount of dollars. There's no understanding of something takes time anymore. Yeah. yeah it's just like with YouTube, I've seen so many channels during the great adpocalypse that went, we all went through. Right. So many channels I'd go and watch and why are you on there? You're not... Yep. taking any time to have any presentation of anything and you just expect people to watch you and your, your channel to grow. Yep. It doesn't. Yep. I mean, you, you guys have started a really great thing. Your nightly shows, they're great. Well, thank you. I, I, enjoy, I don't get to watch them every night, but oh, I enjoy every time I, I stop in for five or 10 minutes. I enjoy it. 
yep. it is worth it is worth seeing. Thank and you. I can go to two or three other live streams and okay, I've seen you play ping pong now and read a book and I'm I can move on to other things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to go back and there's nothing there to see. <laughs> and don't laugh. I actually saw someone reading a book one day. <laughs> Not talking about it. <laughs> Just reading it. <laughs> but it's the greatest things that get uh, the most views, you know, and that's what is so frustrating sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, you you look at some of them and it's like, okay, I I, I haven't hit a thousand yet, and you have twenty five hundred and growing. Yeah. <laughs> and everything I do, it may not be the best, but it is quality. I mm -hmm. try, I try to something. I will go back and look at a couple years from now. I'm, I might go, what was I thinking? But yeah. <laughs> it will still be half decent. I don't decent. think so. I don't think <laughs> you have much to hide about in your channel. Yeah. I think you've been integrity first and Working foremost. It. Yeah. You put, you know, the intros, the, all the stuff that you get, the little clips inside your yeah. videos. You put work in what you put out there. Yeah. It's, you know, I have fun with it. Yes. yes. That's, and you can see that. That's right. You can feel that uh, the passion in your work. And it all started because I was working so many hours and traveling so much for work that I didn't get to sit down and play the piano. Right. And my goal was just to sit down and post something every couple of weeks that would keep me practicing. And then 2013, I was, I posted one video every single week for the whole year. Wow. Wow. And every song to learn it and memorize it takes between 20 and 40 hours. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Now, it's not that but during that practice, I'm doing other songs at the same time, but it, it really, it, it takes hours just to, to learn the song to that level. And it, it was fun. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I had the heart attack, that kind of put, put, put a kibosh on that for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. God almighty. But you know what? Sometimes it gives you a new perspective on things and oh. come back makes you stronger and appreciate more. And you know what you're doing right now is proof of that, I think. I've I've always believed in when life hands you lemons make lemonade. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, I take that a step further now. I, I try to find the good in everything. E even a bad experience. That's like today, mom and I were joking as we were growling, and uh, my my new phrase is there's an awful lot of people that would be hit with wrecking balls right now if I had, if my mind could make it happen. Phrase. <laughs> oh, I love that one. That's so if you hear about, you know, a mass, you know, <laughs> wrecking balls falling from the sky, you know, <laughs> <it's me>. <laughs> <laughs> but then I turned around and I said, but now it's not our fault. It's everybody else's fault. Nothing's getting done. <laughs> we have done every. Our screw ups have now went all the way through the cycle, and we're now back to where everybody else is. <laughs> That's right. <You're> completely free. <laughs> so, so you know, it's just all in how you have to look at it. Well, that's a good outlook. You said that uh, your dad's passing made you look at things differently. Uh, did, that, uh, going uh, through your heart attack made you, made you rethink uh, things as well? Yes. See, I, I had a very unique experience um, when I had my heart attack. I was alone. Oh. And, and yes, even though it was on, on Facebook, I did dissolve three aspirin under my tongue. No, no, that I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dad is old and everything. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But anyway, uh, and I, I had a, I heard a little voice say, "Now, Robert, if you don't call nine one one right now, nobody is." So I called and I talked to the woman on the other end and told her I was having a heart attack and I had dissolved the aspirin and I told her that what my my heart rate was like 130, and if I remember, my blood pressure was 210 over 190, and so I was not good. And I said, I'm, I'm sitting down by the door, and she said, is your door unlocked? Mm. 
reality hit me about that moment. Wow. And um, I got up and I unlocked the door and I said, I did. And they don't stay on the phone with you. No. She hung up. She told me to have a nice day and help would be there. And that was, they were there, I, I bet it wasn't two minutes. It, it was 5.30 in the morning. But it seemed like an eternity. I bet. Wow. But and th then I ended up um, code bluing on the table, going into full cardiac arrest. Um, they brought me back. I came to, I had a balloon pump in my chest. And I was tied, I was strapped down to the bed because if I moved in the wrong way, I could actually have killed myself. Wow. And I was that way for three days. Wow. Crazy. But it was a good incentive to quit smoking, so I quit smoking that day. Oh. <laughs> Again, you have, to, you have to keep everything light. But I'm going through that, and it, it was life-altering. I mean, you just look at everything differently because – the only reason I'm still here, I swear, is when I got to the end of that tunnel and uh, I had to tell the disembodied voice that my cat was sick, I had to go home because there was no one to take care of it. And that's when I woke up. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <That's> a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, just, just, just fact of that. But while I'm going through that, um, we're getting scheduled for the... Um, Surgery, I could only have a double bypass because the third artery was plugged solid. They couldn't do wow. anything about that. So the bottom of my heart is gone. Wow. But that's I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Took me a little while to adjust to life because I wear out much quicker now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just, that's just the way it's going to be. But um, while I'm coming out of that, my cousin, who was 19 days younger than me, uh, had, had a gallbladder um, problem and she wanted to have her gallbladder taken out and they opened her up and she was filled with cancer. Wow. Mm. I'm sorry. So, yeah, you know, it was very weird because I had my surgery. She went downhill and the day I went to my last uh, cardiac rehab session was the day they had her funeral. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, my God almighty. Life altering. <laughs> yeah. So I, I went through about a year and a half of survivor's guilt. <coughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it, it but she she left a legacy behind. Uh, her and her husband started the Miami Dream Center in Florida. And anyone that's viewer that's uh, in Florida, they probably have seen her on television when she was talking about her dream center. So it she left quite a legacy behind, and it just what it was. Um, but it was it was really freaky for me. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I'm I mean, I I'm glad. Xenia just put up the link actually for the uh, Miami uh, Dream Center on the screen, so if anybody wants to check it out. Um, and uh, then less than a year later, in April, well, my heart attack was in February. April the following year, my dad. Uh, went in the hospital with pneumonia, and 19 days later, uh, we took him off the vent and he passed. Oh, wow. So and that was that was life altering again, and yeah. it wasn't a sad thing like you would think it would be. Mm -hmm. I was so thankful. I worked with him for 19 years. Really, you worked together. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was great. I mean, I I learned I learned lessons you just don't learn from your dad from my dad. Right. Of so course. because he was involved in my work life and my home life and all that, I hear him and see him in everything I do every day. So it's a very different feeling there. Hmm. But knowing how quickly your world can change. He went in on April 1st and April 17th he died. Well, yeah. it does in a blink of an eye. In the blink of an eye, my friend. Sounds and like a top year for you. Well, two years, really. Yeah. But it, we all go through it. I'm at, I, I was kind of joking with one of my friends. I said, you know, you're getting to the age when you start seeing your friends sick and passing away. And, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is. And unfortunately, it, it is not. Everybody thinks it's only when they hit 85 it happens. And that's not the case. I mean. I was 48. Yeah. Exactly. 
that's a proof. I don't know if you know about Exenia. Um, do you mind if I mention it all? Or? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, well, Exenia was, uh, she's 34 now. When she was 16, her dad was murdered. Uh, he was uh, beat over the head in a park. In oh, Latvia. wow. And she lost her dad. And then her grandparents slowly faded away. And then when we were living here, she, you were 29. Mm -hmm. And uh, her her last grandmother was very her last grandparent was her grandmother and her father's side was very sick, and uh, her mother had had breast cancer four years before and she came to Canada once, and she went for a checkup in December and everything was great. She was coming back for her second visit in February. She was perfect health. We booked her tickets. Yep. She came in May and she could barely walk and we got her a private PET scan and they found 18 tumors between her brain and her pelvis. Well, it was everyone wow. couldn't do anything. So her grandmother passed away and three weeks later her mom passed away at the age of 55 and that was the end of her family because she was an only child. So she was wow. You know, we were there when her mom passed. Thank God we made it for what the last five or seven yep. days. Yeah, last five days. Yeah. And you know, even the gravestones are seven thousand kilometers away, you know. So I do we, understand when you're saying about yeah. life altering, it's definitely changes your, uh, you know, maybe different way when I lost my dad because I was so young. It's the, like, I mean, it was majorly traumatic, I would even say, but uh, even more so now with my mom's passing. So even at a young age, right. you can still go through those things. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, was, you, you really don't understand it until you've been through it. Yes. That's true. This is true. That is very true. And and I what I yeah. what I realized it that it doesn't really matter if you know that the person is gonna pass or it happens suddenly. Like my dad, like we, we searched for him, like he was a missing person because we didn't know that happened for a week. And uh, but it was a sudden loss, right? My mother, it was fast, but I kind of understood it's gonna happen. But I realized that it doesn't really matter how much it hurts uh, if it's. Uh, you know, uh, if you can foresee it or it happens suddenly. And that surprised me. I somehow thought that when you do know, you can handle it better. Yeah, I don't think there is a good way. Yeah. We always think whichever way it happened, it should have happened the other way would have been easier, but I don't think so. And, you know, one thing too, no two people are going to handle it the same way. Yes, mm -hmm. that's so true. And even the person, the same person could go through something couple of years apart and be at a different point in their life that they can handle it better or worse as yeah, well. Definitely. It depends where you're at in life when yep. it does happen. Oh yeah. It's uh when we went over her mother was there and they wouldn't give her any um painkillers until we got there for Xenia to give the okay and it was one of the cruel so if anybody ever says that it's cruel to give somebody morphine and stuff like that, yeah. we've seen it without and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It was the worst sight I ever seen for such a strong woman to be in mm -hmm. such suffering. And they gave her nothing. When we got in, she was literally like this, <laughs> laying on the bed, like she was down on her knees, holding because she had the tumors in her head. And they wouldn't give her a single painkiller until Xenia gave the okay. And it's like, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, so. So yeah, so I guess we... I'm really glad that you do get to spend your time yes. with your mom, though, out of all of this situation that we talked about. Yeah. Um, I do, and and I, when I was watching your videos about building the house, that's the part. And again, house is great. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy about the house. But, uh, that's the part that uh, I love so much about it—that you get to spend yeah. so much time with your mom. Do, making those decisions oh, you know, yeah. uh, and making the memories with her and that's what i loved about the videos about building the house so much yeah it's uh definitely a, it, it's just a neat thing yeah. and you know may, maybe it'll help other people that you know get your moms involved or get your parents involved when you can mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you you can go into that two different ways or do you want to take them in as a burden or do you want to take them in as a partner that's a really, what a great, I never thought of it that way before. Yeah. wording it that way. Yeah. How smart is that? And oh, it's man. just, you know, it's just it's like the life is changing. You just pick up and you move on. And, you know, she keeps telling me that I, I'm just, if it wouldn't have been for me, she wouldn't have been able to get through that. And I don't think I did anything. Yeah, but you did. That's the big thing. Other than say we'll get through it. 
but it's, it means a lot because it didn't have to be said. That's why it means so much, and that's why it helps so much, because it's not asked for. It's just given. What you said, and I have no control over your channel, but what you just said a moment ago about that, would you rather you know, take them or make them a partner? I hope you'll make a video about that, if that is the theme, and talk about that. because I we, think we, we may. Mom is getting to the place now where once we get settled with the house, she is at the point at the end of the grieving process now where she does have a story she would like to tell because there are so many people that are going through losing their spouse. And yes. her, right now her biggest piece of advice is when you walk through your house and you can, all you see is the ghost of your spouse there. Yes. It's time to get rid of the house. Yes. That's not the happy memories there. That's mm -hmm. right. That's you very know? true. And, and when she told me, she said, I, I want to sell my house. I said, well, do you want to move in with me? Do you want to get a condo? What do you want to do? She said, well, I, I could move in with you, and then maybe we could get a bigger place. Hmm. And that's what we did. I love that. That's and it, and then we had, we had an auction because Dad had every tool known to man. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not a big woodworker or anything. Right. And there, well, she sold the house in three days. Mm. And it was a cash deal. And the woman that bought it wanted possession of the house in two weeks. Wow. So we had an auction. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny now because mom doesn't know what she still has because most of her stuff's in storage. <laughs> Oh my it's going to be like, we're, we're looking forward to moving into the house because it'll be like Christmas. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're already stocked. Your garage will be ready to go. <laughs> That's been our running joke for the last six months since she's moved in. Uh, oh, we man. have one, but it, it's in storage. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I'm not going to go buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> I have one too, but it's buried somewhere in the attic because yeah. you brought your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the guy I got uh, the house from, he was the same way. My God Almighty, I never seen somebody buy so much stuff in my life. Like hand saws, I found ten of them so far. Buck saws, I found eleven. Hatchets, I found like nine. And I like them as much as the next person, but I'm not an octopus, so I kind of got to. <laughs> so I instead of like trying to sell it, I'm like giving it to family and stuff like that. And here, you know what? Hand saws for everybody. Big spender today. Here you go. You know, I sound like a Kmart shopper. You know, <laughs> hey, see, you could be giving, you could be having your channel giveaways and be giving away tools. <laughs> That's a good idea. Never thought of that. <laughs> Our fifty-first <laughs> comment of the <laughs> night. Thousand <laughs> subscriber mark. <laughs> and a wrench for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. Thank you, oh Rob. my god! That is so amazing. We could do it for like big spenders for yeah, years. Yeah. Well, you know, I bought this and I wanted it for me, but you know what? You guys are more important. <laughs> the worst part is in Canada, shipping is so expensive. It's disgustingly expensive. It would cost more for the shipping than the buck saw, I think, in the end. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. That's why they don't do contests here a lot, because every time they realize the shipping costs, they don't bother. So, But I like your thinking. Maybe we could deliver it. Hey, we get a place to stay on top of it. Guess yeah. what? We're bringing that buck saw to you. <laughs> I just put us up for the night and feed us breakfast. That's right. We're not hard to get along with. Donnie offered us his shed in England if we go. So there you go. And then he said he's going to come over here, so we're going to switch houses. Oh, okay. There you <laughs> go. How swap. How How swap. Are they yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you on tonight because, like, you're another one we've known pretty much since the beginning. You've been a pretty stand up supporter. I find you take it seriously. And I believe. Not to toot our own horn, but we were talking about this the last couple of nights as we hit our 50th episode. That that was the whole point of this live stream was to kind of filter out and have a place where everybody was kind of decent supporters in it for the long haul. And I think we've kind of accomplished that. And you're yes. definitely one of the first ones that come with us on that, you know? Yes, it's uh, we, we, we have our other niche where it's the people trying to get just to get their views up and just to get their numbers up. To yeah. their, and 
that that niche it's always going to be just the people getting to that point because yep. you know it this sounds terrible but it's almost like when you go into the dog shelter yes yeah pick me pick me pick me yep, that's right yes yes and yes I, I hope that doesn't come off in a wrong no, way it's just that that's that's just the level it's at right there and there's nothing wrong with that no it serves a purpose but it's not but you know as our channels grow Yep. Just like you, you're doing. You're bringing it in for us, a better, better platform where we can meet each other, we can talk, because you know it's impossible to support two thousand channels. You can't. You can't do it. You can't no. do, it. You can't can't do, do three hundred. You can visit three hundred during the course of a year, but that would be it. That's right. There's no real dedication to any of it, and even some really good channels I can't even keep up with anymore. I notice I'm slacking, and I'm trying. And I feel guilty when I see them pop up. It's like, God, I haven't been there in two weeks. And we are trying. Like, we're doing this six nights a week. It's impossible to visit anybody yeah. anymore. Yeah, well, that's – I kind of dropped off a little bit on my posting because, A, I've got this house going on. Of course. And, and B, I was trying just to catch up because I had such a list of channels. And if I subscribe to your channel, I'm going to watch your content. Yeah. I may not stay subscribed because it may just not be – that interesting to me but i will give you watch time because i commit it when i yeah. when i click that little button i i committed and i stay that way that's true and so I, I started going through and started weeding down and there are a lot and i mean a lot of good channels out here yep that's right there, there's some i'm not interested in but boy the time people take to do them well that's it exactly and it's, it's quality it's like a piece of art or music you might not necessarily like, but you can still appreciate the musicianship into it. The same with a video or somebody's talent that they have on YouTube. That's that. I, um, if he's still on or if he's come back, A. Joe. Yeah. He has. He doesn't have much out there, but what he has, he spent hours doing, and it shows, and it's entertaining. Yep. That, I agree. I mean, he's one of those guys that everybody likes. You know, it's like Norm Macdonald in the comedian world where the comedians go to see him. All the YouTubers that like good content all go to see A. Joe when they want to watch something really good, you know? Yeah, that's a good quality content there. And his yeah. ratio is amazing. Look at, for like you say, the amount of uh, videos that he has. Look at the amount of watcher of views he gets per video. Yes. Yeah, yeah he's going to he, he's going to be a creeper. He's going to creep up and he's going to He's one yeah. video away from somebody like Peter McKinnon, one of the big guys finding and Twittering yeah. it out. And then I can see said, it happening. Yep, yeah, me too. It's going to yeah. happen. It's really going to happen with him. And then we've got Ms. Kathy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I watched three books, and I wished I had children <sighs> because I thought it was a little creepy for an adult to be watching her read children's books. <laughs> 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 but she she has a wonderful wonderful channel she does yeah she yeah. does i actually found her first through her uh, uh well personal vlogging channel when she was going through her uh cancer and treatment that she had and uh, because of my mother i kind of you know like related with her story and that's how we got connected i didn't even know for the longest time she has another channel was reading books <laughs> and then all of a sudden no oh, i'm reading books what <laughs> and like <laughs> Uh, you know, so it's, it's quite interesting yeah, it uh, is. To, to discover these all different sides of people. <laughs> and, and, and then Patsy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. Now, I, I have to say, I don't know what was more entertaining, watching <laughs> one of her videos or watching her on your show. I knew that was coming, <laughs> yeah. I can't keep it together when I have Patsy on. I can't keep it together. And Kathy's the same way as me. There we just... Oh. <laughs> It, it's just amazing. It's, it's just that stare in the camera. Don't you agree, Andy? And then that stare, it just kills me every time. No, I hate being called Andy, and I was never a puppet person. <laughs> that's something that nobody else can. I don't know what it is. It, it, Patsy makes me blush. Yes. <laughs> I, the only one person besides me that makes you blush is Patsy. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I do. I turn so beet red, I got to hide my face from the camera for a minute to compose myself. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, yeah, you happy now? <laughs> That's the money shot, folks, right there. <laughs> God Almighty. <laughs> I absolutely okay. I adore Patsy. I adore her. I had something about it. It's such a time, a simpler time, and a time like I said. I never liked puppets growing up. I didn't care for much for the Muppets. I didn't like Sesame Street very much. But there's something about it. I don't know. It's just so well done, and she's got a humor that's like SpongeBob, where the kids liked it, but also the adults could get it. And I like that play. You know, it's not raunchy, but it's also not all childlike. It's a nice mix right around the line without ever crossing anything too far yeah, on either yeah. side. Yeah, and yeah. a relatable, you know, for that reason. And like she says, she's got a little hidden message in everything she posts. Yeah. That's right, yes. And it is nice. You know, it, it is. Uh, she puts a lot of work into that. There's a yes, lot of work goes in. There is. And I like that when we had her on, I was very proud that I got her to talk about the director some, you know, like and kind of open up a little bit how the director was growing up and things. And, you know, I always want people to walk away from this getting a little bit of what they don't usually see on the lens. We're not a talk show. Nobody's supposed to be bawling for hours or do like a big expose. It's just more about the person behind it, because I really do think that's what makes that official bond that lasts. Mm hmm. Because you can watch a video for years and still not know much about the person behind oh, the walls. Yeah, and you know, well, we're we're all when we do our videos, we are presenting ourselves the way in a certain way. Yes. And you know, Very it was true. my my channel up until this year, and if you go back through, you'll see almost nothing but piano videos or tutorials of how to play a song or how to walk through some of the style I play, and that's that's about all that's on there. And then with with the change, well, one thing too, I uh, I bruised my finger, oh. <laughs> and, it, and it hurts to play. So oh, no, oh. did it about six weeks ago. And if you actually wow. watch the last video, if you watch my hand shot, uh, my right index finger is not doing much work. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's Gee. a long time though. I don't know what I. It's under the nail. I don't know what I did, but it'll grow out or work itself out. It was just a weird thing. Wow. Oh, I hope it heals quickly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I gave up on quickly. It just doesn't hurt as bad now. I can start to, I, I've been playing. It's just, yeah. after about 20 minutes or so, and that's usually when I'm warmed up, that's when it's hurting enough. I decided, usually decide not to record. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. Though. That's, but I've got at least two more videos I'll do this to get us into the summer. Well, yeah, anything, I mean, you got a lot of fans in here tonight, a lot of people talking, we're talking piano right from the get-go, so you're associated with piano at this point. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, and that's, that's a good thing. That was that was the plan. Yeah. <laughs> and I have, I probably have about 300 piano videos out there right now. Unreal. I've, Unreal. Been, working, I've been working my way through, uh, I have two fake books, one has 800 songs in it and one has 1,200. Wow. But some That's of your great. videos have been doing really well. Yeah. Like I've, uh, you have one video that has like 140,000 views. Yeah. And then lots of the like seven, 8,000 views, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, the 140,000 views uh, isn't me. Yeah. I found an old VHS tape and I shared it. <laughs> 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 and that's the one that I, I had hit... Uh, during, during apocalypse somebody put that video on a playlist somewhere Ooh. and it was getting over a thousand views a day That's oh crazy wow. so in february i had over thirty thousand views oh on my, my channel god. it was like thirty nine thousand. oh my god i was all excited yeah then came march and i started participating in you know the community and my views went down to seven thousand Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that video obviously got taken off because that video was the one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if you look at my stats and didn't know that, you would go, what happened? <laughs> 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 I'm thankful it did so well, but <laughs> definitely, I mean, it's kind of depressing when it's not the one anyone you've done. <laughs> no, I, I understand that feeling, but, too. But it could be a launching, you know, and it's still oh, it is. enough that some of your other videos might just like kind of they are. 
They yeah. are. I, I, I'm, I get views regularly, and it's, it's wild. I play a variety of, of music, mm -hmm. and there is not one style that gets more or less than the others. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's steady. It's, it's what you want. So, you know, and I don't get a lot of feedback. And that, that, that's kind of hard for me because what do I play next? Yeah. You know, like, do I, oh, my country, everybody's really loving that. They, they like the twangy piano. Okay, I'll do some more of that. Or the hymns. Okay, I can do some more of that. But I don't get a lot of feedback. So it's always been a little tough for me. So I just play what I want to. <laughs> That's the best thing I think you can do, really. <laughs> And I'm, it's people are gonna find it. And people are gonna like it, and I don't know. I don't think you're in too deep of water. I think you're pretty good, at, well off with your talents, and that people are gonna appreciate it. I think you're another one too. That's a, just another video away from another one like erupting. Oh and yeah, your own. I, I I hope so. It, it would be neat to get a little recognition at some point, but at the same time, I I am getting recognition inside the community. Every yeah. time I every time I say hi on your channel, I get two subscribers. Good. At least, just because I said hi. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And I don't and I don't lose them. That's so that that I'm that's just that that is a that's really a makes me feel really good that I'm in with a good group of people. Well, thank you, because you're one of those ones that we respect your opinion on, especially because it's been since the beginning. So I think you understood really what we wanted to do here. And having you say that means a lot because that was the whole goal. Oh yeah, it's it it's 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 just a given with all that. You know, like you you've seen our work that I like I was doing before we did this. I put a lot of effort. Oh in yeah. It. You yeah your your photography side that you've done the videos on. It, it's it's well worth watching. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've I've watched several of them. I, I went back. I, I, one other thing too, I hate about live streaming. Now, you guys are not who I'm talking about because your streams are worth watching. But there are a lot of channels that had good content. But you, I am going to throw this thing away. But anyway, <laughs> I've smacked it three times. You're going to see it go flying, and you know, just laugh at me. Uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. It was a long one too. Uh, <laughs> that just stream now. Um, yes. saying, yeah. They, they, they're, they're doing, you know, one, two streams a day. You can't find what their original content was Yeah. without digging. And it's mm -hmm. sad because give yourself some time. You've got good stuff out there. It's just you're burying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get you. I'm, I'm missing. I'm going through the withdrawal of doing editing and it's getting to be more and more, especially with the sun coming out more. Mm -hmm. Canada, yeah. cold winters, you know, so this is the time when everybody on thaws and wants to get going again. The only solstice I got into it right now is the live stream helped us with watch time, but I didn't want to do it unless we could put out a decent enough product that would equal what we did with our cinematic stuff. Right. You know, yeah. I didn't want to right. just put it right. in the same And you, you're doing it right. You know. Well, thank you. I, I, I've tried live streaming, and I, I've done a couple, and probably once we get moved... I uh, had started a series of, called Fake Book Friday. And that's where I would just go through my book and do a little lounge playing, and then I post it. What I'd like to do at some point in the future is do that on maybe a Friday or a Thursday night for an hour or so, just go through the book and play, but do it live and let everybody talk amongst themselves. I love that. Yeah. I think that's that kind of like a lounge atmosphere. Yeah, lounge was romp -off. I love that. <laughs> but, I love but, that. I will say, unlike Scott Bradley, I can't read the texts and play the piano and talk at the same time. No, <laughs> no, no. That's, that's where you need one or two really good monitors and let them <laughs> yeah. have yeah. the, the chat and you do your playing yeah. in that. Because we look at ourselves kind of the same way. We're kind of like, I mean, we will get to watch it more, but we kind of look at ourselves as like a comedy uh, club where everybody gets to sit at little tables, but they get small enough to get to talk to each other while they're watching the show. Yeah. And the same with you. It's more like a lounge act, you know, where they can sit down. It's not chambers. They can still mingle with each yes. other. And there's somebody to walk them through what's going on in that. And I think that would be a great idea. Miss Kathy says that she loves that. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you, Kathy. She's such a sweetheart. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, we, we've met uh, by phone a few months oh. ago. <laughs> she couldn't get OBS to work, and so we, we kind of had a lunch date. Well, that's amazing. Oh. <laughs> that's nice. I got to call Kathy because Kathy gave me her number. God love her. When I did the uh, video where I was frustrated with everything, I don't want to get into that tonight, but the one where I kind of just talked and she gave yeah, her I, number. I, wa I watched that one. Yeah. And that uh, she gave me her number after to talk, and I really appreciate that. And I was so busy at the time, I didn't get a chance to take her up in the offer, but I definitely will because I thought that was so sweet of her. So, you know, we're family. We're all oh, family yeah. here. And I will tell you, Kathy is the same person off camera as she is on. Yes, mm. I, I believe that 1000%. <laughs> That's what I love. She is just a sweetheart. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. We had her husband on with, I think you were there that night. Yeah, yeah, I was. And that was such a great interview. Like, that was so amazing, the two of them together talking. Well, last week I thought of that because she was doing a little live stream on Friday night, and her husband came in. Oh, and, she had to move, and she had to move her laptop because he doesn't like to be on camera, and I yeah. died laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Because I knew the week before he had been on your show. <laughs> That's why we're so honored he came on. <laughs> it was another Haley's Comet moment we called those. <laughs> yeah, I never know. <laughs> I thought it was so nice, and I tell people that. Like, they're nervous of coming on. Like, after a few minutes, if we're doing our job right, it just feels like we're talking. You all, Not that we don't like the chat, but you almost forget the chat is there. I'll tell you, I've been, I've been doing the videos long enough now. I remember how nervous I was putting that camcorder in front of me. I can imagine. And recording, and recording, and recording, and saying words I can't repeat right now, and <laughs> recording some more. <laughs> <laughs> and that was on eight millimeter digital tape. So oh. then, it, then you had to transfer it, and then you had to edit, and of course, if the quality wasn't that great. No, it was DVD quality, but for, yeah, I know what you mean. But still. It, it it was okay, but for YouTube, it's because it yeah. got over compressed. But anyway, and now I can put it down. I don't care. <laughs> Here's what I got, folks. This is it. I, and the, the the way this chat works out, this is great because it doesn't feel like I'm even talking with anybody else watching. Yes, I'm just talking to you. That's right. It's just like a live stream, like a like a Skype talk. You know? Yeah, that, that's what it feels like. So this is a really cool idea. Well, we didn't know what to say to anybody once the live stream kind of took off, and like, what the hell do we do now? You know, people actually want us to do more. We got nothing to say for an hour or two. Let's get somebody else on and see how that works. And it kind of grew into it, but it was never supposed to be like long term. Literally every night at the beginning was this is the last time we're doing it. I'm going back to editing because he's going back to her photography. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was nice to have the support, you know. And people were interested in us because we were never in front of the camera. Nobody ever knew what we really were. So that was kind of that mystique behind all of it. So when we finally kind of, I guess, are coming out, I guess you'd call it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and people were like, oh, I get it. They're a man and a woman. Oh, they're not 20. Oh, they're not just one. Because we had answer stuff, and it was sometimes a girl answer or a guy answer, and <laughs> nobody knew what kind of an anomaly we were. You know? so, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of missed that because that mystique really helped, I think, once we started growing. Because I was like you. I was so tired of pouring 30, 40 hours into an edit to have 20 people watch it. I was like, what the hell is the use? Mm -hmm. I'm just wasting my time here. Nobody cares. So why should I be killing myself? I'll go back to doing our wedding stuff and let the YouTube channel just kind of windle off. But yeah, well, so. with, with with me with YouTube, I am just doing it to put something out there because and I enjoy doing it. And I started doing the monetization on it. I'm not. You guys, mon are you monetizing yet? No, no. we never had anything for uh, it. We, had, we were yeah, minuscule. Yeah. Well, okay, I was on for almost two years and I got my check for $100. Ooh. Okay, after two years. And the day after I got my check, I got an email from YouTube. The same one you got. Wow. Or the same one everyone that was monetized got. Anyway. Yeah. But I was only doing it because I had read from 
or from other channels that were growing, they said, go ahead and do it now. And in a few years, you might be making $100 a month. Yeah. And my, my joke on that is, well, great. That'll be supplemental income when I retire in about 12 years. And I yes. won't have to eat cat food. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> but so it really didn't matter to me other than it was like, oh, send me a paycheck and then stop the program. Okay. I'm costing you too much money. <laughs> We're kind of all on the same page, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. Of, yeah. Like for us, we want to monetize and we still do. We're going to. We're almost at the 240,000 minutes. But uh, the main reason why is because it helps promote our business in real life. Yes. Because again, the name Pusha Studio is more visible. Yeah. And once you're monetized, YouTube is willing to push you a little more because then they're getting money out of you. Yeah, it's mostly not but, for the no. you know, dollars. It's mostly so we get more of a visibility for local businesses. Like if we tomorrow took off and everybody's watching and we're making a living out of it, well, that would be great. But it's nowhere near in our plans. It's the you know, it's not even. The, to me, that's like dreaming, like saying, like, okay, well, I'm going to go to L.A. and be a rock star, you know, and make a lot of money. It's one of those dreams. Yeah. So unobtainable. But so many people are falling into that trap, and I see that as a lot with different channels. Like, and I'm not picking on them, but like certain family channels, you can see the kid looks like he'd rather pull his eyes, and you can tell they've done 30 takes to try and make it look like a happy family or. You know, or all this, like, and it's not just family child. I want to stress it so I don't get any crap from anybody. I'm just taking one example. It's people doing it just for the sake of thinking they're going to get rich. And the same as the quality of some of them. They got a camera going. You yeah, can yeah. barely even see their face. And, well, I want to be a, a Casey Neistat, you know. It don't work that way. There's a talent in the way he edits. Yes. I don't 100%. have that talent. I don't, have, I don't see nope. that. I could never do in front of a camera what he does, like in front, like live, uh, like vlogging. Never. It's not me, and it is a talent. I'm so. I'm not saying that some guys shouldn't belong there, but it's the same as music. Once again, I look at someone like the the Logan Pauls, and I consider them like boy bands. They were manufactured. <laughs> they have a Disney background, and I mean, what are you going to do? That's what money does this day and age. It's the same as it's always done. You can't fight that. But then you get guys like Peter McKinnon and these guys. They did work their way up. They didn't get put in there. They did earn their, you know, people like to hate on them right now because of apocalypse. But I don't think that's fair. It's like blaming somebody else for your own problems, you know. Uh, they did do what they did. You can't take it away from them. I will say one thing with uh, the advertising on YouTube. Last year. Uh, there was the big upset with the advertisers. The revenues went down. I again, it took me two years, so yeah, hundred dollars. But I was making maybe a dollar a month, mm -hmm. and then right around December, I went up to like twenty twenty five dollars in a month, and then and wow. it was amazing. And I'm I'm that's where I really thought really, I finally get my paycheck the next week. The mm -hmm. next week, I had fifteen dollars in my account, and I'm going, "Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be able to buy more than cat food this month too." This is true. <laughs> and you can take a, you could uh, take out only by hundreds, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what did they do with all that money that was left over? They had to give it back at a certain point. If you didn't qualify, they had to give you the. Remainder. So did they? So if you had ninety-five dollars, I've got right? I've got fifteen dollars in my AdSense account right now. Oh, okay. Okay, like a credit. I can close my AdSense account, but then I would, and I could get my money, but then I would have to start over and have to have the verification and the mm -hmm. card they send you in the mail, which you probably yeah. got that. You have to go through that whole process again. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I just, it's $15. Yeah. I, I've, I've done videos on Rumble, and I think I have $6 coming to me there, but you have to have 10 before they'll pay you. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. That there's your retirement fund. There, there's two cans of cat food you can get. <laughs> That's <there>. right. <laughs> <laughs> but like even what happened with, and we know it was with PewDiePie and what happened. The sad part was, I still believe to this day it was more kind of the big guys, the advertisers that come together where we're waiting for one of these things to try and get out of the money that they were paying. I still think there was some cahoots going on, and he was kind of the scapegoat in all of it. Oh, um, there, 
it, there's always something behind the scenes we don't yes. know. And then they give us a good story. Yeah, and I mean, YouTube needs money like any other company because they are serving this somewhere. There are computers somewhere hosting all of these videos going up. It's inevitable. We all want to think it's a kumbaya moment. But there is money played. Can you imagine the server farm they have doing this? And I know there's multiples. Yeah, yeah. And even those ones, the size of those things, like, you know, they're mind-blowing how the size, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And that's why when you go out to click on a video, sometimes it, it you just get the black screen of death on it, nothing. Yep. That's because it's archived. Yeah. It's there. It just hasn't been pulled back yet. Yeah. And when you refresh your screen or you go back and look at it tomorrow, it's there. Well, you asked for it. The archive engine has brought it back. It just, you were queued behind 2 million other people that were pulling back archives. Isn't it mind blowing those numbers? Well, that, that was just like, you know, the, think of the channels that lost their advertising. Yeah. It was millions. It, yes. wasn't, it wasn't 20, it wasn't 100, it wasn't 1,000, it was millions. 100%. And the big guys were getting blamed, you know, and saying, oh, well, they can still survive. But imagine if you were at work and one day somebody showed up and said, guess what? You're going to lose 80% of your pay right now on the spot. And it's gone for months. I mean, a human is a human. You, you've learned to bank on that money. You know what's coming in. You've learned to live on that. You've earned it. Whether you like their content or not, it's still theirs, you know, and they got hit yep. really hard, some of them. Like, look at Phil DeFranco, you know, a guy that does a news type of show. And loses like you know seventy percent of his revenue because he talks about a war, you know that war that's actually going on. That ABC yeah. and all these guys they get full rights to. He's not saying kill anybody. He's saying there's a war going on. Yep. It's uh, it's the wild west right now, and people got to realize that YouTube is the wild west. There's no real laws yet. Nobody knows what fully to do with it. Yep, and we and we don't have self restraint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm speaking as society, not not yeah. as us. There, there was one thing I, I've said this several times in the last month. Um, this week was the anniversary of uh, Mr. Rogers being on the air. It was 50 years, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And when I saw that, it dawned on me that we now have a generation of children that grew up without him. Mm hmm. That's true. And he, I mean, I, I remember every lesson he taught me. Yeah. And, you know, he, he went through divorce. He went through losing your parent. He went through, you know, things yep. happening that shouldn't happen and to tell adults. And, yep. you know, we, we, we lost a role model for our children. Definitely. And, and there isn't one to replace him. <clears throat> nope. I, I think that's why Miss Kathy really kind of, yeah, me up because I thought, oh, this is what the kids need. Yes, yes, I agree. Positive mm -hmm. reinforcement. Yep, I like that. That's a very good point about with Miss Kathy and yeah. that filling a void that's needed. Yeah, and I mean, even some of the Canadian shows that were shown on PBS in the states, like Romper Room and uh, oh, shows, those were all filmed in Toronto. Those shows. Um, um, Mr. Dress Up was another one that did that, like we're teaching kids how to draw in the same thing, you know, two puppets and talked about everything from abuse to all these things very light, but they still covered it over the years. And well, they gave they gave it they gave us our safe place, I guess, without yeah. without a real physical safe place. Because we could always get on the trolley and go to the land of make believe. Yes, that's right. <laughs> One hundred percent. As a matter of fact, I bought a trolley. I saw at Hobby Lobby that made me think of trolley. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> it, it's going to have a place of honor in the new house. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you know me for trains or anything trains. <laughs> yeah. You're preaching to the converted on this one. <laughs> that's even why I love trains like that because I do. It's something I need. I wanted to do something with my son. He's was well ten then, and it was something that I could keep shooting and do something with him and also it connects me to that time when i was younger because growing up in a rural area there's no big airports or nothing trains were always kind of that escape to something bigger so i think there's a connection to it plus even a railroad when you live in a city it's the closest thing you'll feel to a rural area because it's got the metal going the machinery you know the longer grass it's a little touch of the rural area even in the cities I was 11 when we moved to the country, and we lived 
two doors down from the railroad tracks uh -huh. before that. I grew up, oh, and the man in the caboose. Yes, waving. He over. would always wave and he'd throw candy at us. And that yeah, was the yeah. only stranger we could take candy from. Yes. <laughs> You can always trust the caboose man, even though he come through, nobody knew he was. Anything. He worked for the train, so he had to pass for a good guy. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that so well. Hmm. It was good times. I miss the caboose. I really miss the caboose. I know they had to get rid of it. Why they did, but I still miss seeing it at the end of a train. Uh, in Ohio, we have a town that has it's the hocking it's the hocking railroad in Nelsonville, Ohio. They have a train that is all cabooses you can ride. Wow. Yeah, interesting. That's cool. All cabooses. The whole and time. only about nine hours out of the way when you're going up uh, through the coast, you know, if you want to stop by and take a look at that on vacation. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my. Yeah, I, I, I think I know where we're going if we're down I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Well, I love trains, but I don't want to be one of those. It's the same as any hobby. Then there's the obsessives, and I don't want to join them. So anybody's listening, I don't wear a train hat when I'm walking around the house. I don't have a HO scale clock that I live by. I just like trains for what they are. So, Because some of them get really into it, and it's a little terrifying sometimes. <laughs> and I don't cross that line when you see a 70-year-old man worried because they couldn't get their train there because it derailed, and they were 40 minutes late with a load. When you literally have to pick it up <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break the fourth wall and everything, but sometimes you just got to give in. <laughs> we were in Denmark. We took the kids on a road trip, and I wanted to go into Hamburg, Germany, and I'm still kicking my ass that I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, but we'll go get there again. They have the world's biggest mono railway. If you ever look it up, just type in Hamburg mono railway. It's 50,000 square feet. And That's... they have. Planes get off. It's a whole team that work onto it. It's a great big exhibition center that's been turned over into it. And they've recreated cities from all over the world. They have all different types of trains from freights to European speed rail. And like I said, they have jets that actually you can see flying with a little arm underneath them, but full lit up uh, runways. They got like Frankfurt, Germany recreated. Wow. It's, uh, it's mind boggling. And I'm sorry wow. we didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Next time. We might go just for that, I think, next time. Yes. Oh, if I let – I don't care if we see anything else. Even yeah. family, I love your family, but I don't <laughs> care to go back home if that's the case. <laughs> oh. But that is something. It's a spectacle in itself to see, and I've always wanted to see it in real life. But one of these days. <laughs> so what's your plans for the summer? Uh, you got the house. Are you still planning to do some music as well? Like yeah, I'll be doing – I'll be doing some of that this summer, um, and we're going to do a couple of day trips. We, we, have, we have this house to pay for now, so – and we have to buy the appliances and uh, – A lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. And Lord knows we can't put old furniture in the new house. I have video of my mother walking around the model of the house with furniture splashes. Oh, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I love this lady so oh much. Oh my right? goodness. I love this so much. This is so sweet. When the new house is ready and you're moved in, we're going to be back because the kids will be in school and all this stuff. Yes. We want to do another episode with you and your mom in the new house. Oh, we That's will. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll, set, I'll set up cameras in every room so we can do a virtual tour. That okay, would be amazing. But, oh. Yeah, we got to do it. but... Yeah. Like such a you know what she reminds me of? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you exactly what she reminds me of. The both of you. Too. You guys remind me of David Letterman and his mom. <laughs> That's what I think of every time. Wow. You know when he used to bring his mom on all the time? She'd send her to the Olympics and all this stuff? That's exactly what you guys remind me of. <laughs> I'm getting her out of her shell. I might be able to send her off on a off on a trip soon. Well, I don't want you to get rid of her too far. I don't want you to, I'm not trying to cause any friction here. Oh, no, but I can, send her to, I can see her trying, trying to do an event. Oh, yeah, you should have, you should have seen her. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Today, we're out on the property, and she wants to take a picture of me. Well, actually, she took a picture of me for you guys yesterday. Mm. Oh, that and, was a very nice picture. Well, I handed her my iPhone, and... She does good, you know, with an old fashioned, you know, she's fine with her Kodak. Right. So, but I hand her my iPhone and she, I said, now just tap here. So 
she's holding it up and she said, oh, that looks good. And I hear, <laughs> so we have 144 pictures. <laughs> I'm, imp I'm impressed with the processor to do that. Yeah, right no, exactly. It's a lot for the phone. <laughs> I'm cracking up at her. And it, it, I'm not laughing at her. It's just cute things. Oh, my God. That's so <laughs> funny. I can picture so, it right now. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have some Snapchat video, too, of her. Oh, 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 she's on Snapchat too. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> and she's not no. <laughs> I have to tell you, I post. She she does them, and she we play them back, and she laughs at herself. No. And so then I so I put them on my Facebook. <laughs> then she has people that can't believe they that her son would post these things, making fun of her like that. And she's, what do you mean? I'm. I told him to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> she's a good sport, but a god lover. Oh my god, she's great. And you see, Flub and Epic agrees. He wrote, Yes, that's who they remind me of. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> so I'm not alone. <laughs> so you, I hope your wife loves David, your mom loves David Letterman because you can tell her after. So please, oh, well, well, yeah, she, she's in her night clothes, so she won't be down. No. Well, yeah. Please give her a, a one. You're done. The but place. next time yeah. when you are with a house, we would love to see yes, her. Yes. Well, I hopefully I will get her. Uh, I get her on at, at some point. She she's warming up to the camera. It That's takes time, and you don't want to force that because you want her to have fun with you. She's done two singing videos, um, and we we have a little bit of work to do on lip syncing with her. But we're going to get there. Uh -huh. That is so cool, though. I, I I really love the dynamic with you and yes. your mom. It's so it's so nice to see. It's refreshing. That's what it is, really. Yeah, it's it's all in having fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it, and that's what this. <coughs> that's what we've been preaching to everybody. We're not getting rich right now off of this. None of us here, and it's not to pick on anybody. This is the golden years, and I can't stress that. To I want to turn the camera. Let's say it straight again, in case anybody misses the other night. This is the golden time you'll ever have in YouTube. Because if you do get to make it big, it's not going to be this much fun. So enjoy every second of it right now. You'll never feel more creative, more free. And the, the truest feeling of what YouTube should be is right now what we're all doing right here. And yeah. I mean that. Well, this, this is the spirit of what YouTube was. Yes. I mean, remember, the first video on YouTube was at a, at a zoo. Yeah. Elephants at a zoo, wasn't it? Right. Yes. And that's what it was supposed to be. It was. It was. There was never. When we first seen YouTube back then, did you did you get into YouTube around two thousand five, two thousand six? I don't. I think it may be two thousand eight. So it had been up for a little while before I started watching anything on YouTube. And at that time, I, I had thought about posting. Yeah. But one thing I have to be aware of is copyright. Yes, of course. And at that time, YouTube was very, very um, strict on that. Mm -hmm. You get your videos taken down, your channel taken down. You could be sued. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. And then over the years, so when I did start doing YouTube, I did everything was public domain, everything 100 years or older. Right. So my, my early, most of my early videos are public domain that way. Uh, then YouTube started, and they had announced that they had contracts with the labels and there was revenue sharing and everything else, and that was good. You could post. But there was no place to see what was and wasn't allowed to be posted. Right. Mm -hmm. So you would upload, and sometimes you get a copyright hit, sometimes you wouldn't. As a matter of fact, my very first copyright hit was on Silent Night. Really? Oh. Yes. And it was a German choir version that they said that I stole. Wow. And uh, that song's from 1800 and something. It, it's, it's been public domain forever. Well, yeah, isn't everything uh, before 1920-something the public? 1922. Yes, that's right. So 
anyway, now they have what they call music policies, and you can look up every song, and if yes. it comes up, it tells you what you're allowed to post and what you. Which is good. And they have that up. I'm I'm thankful. That's why I, I play a lot more newer stuff now because I know if I because I don't want to take down notice, and I don't oh. want I don't want banned, and I sure don't want sued over something I'm not even getting paid to do. Exactly, one hundred percent. And I agree with you. That was one of the best things they ever put up. Yes. One of the most helpful tools to a creator. And I just preach to other people, go and check. Even if it says it's free, you see it on a YouTube channel, go and look it up. It only takes two minutes, and you'll know if you're in the right or not. It's better to find out now than make a video, spend all the time, and have it pulled down in a copyright strike facing yeah. you. Yeah. I got a copyright strike on um, – well, not a copyright strike, but I got a copyright hit on one of my home build building videos. By what? For what? That the little snippet of the uh, movie that I had in there. Yeah. Mm. Warner Brothers put a claim against it. Oh. And they were going to advertise, and I, I fought it and won. So you oh. can you can beat the system. Yeah. But I just put that it was, uh, it was less than a minute of, a, um, an hour and a half movie. I have the whole movie. And I was using it to lead in, which is legally. What yes. fair use is? I was just going to say about the fair use model. <clears throat> and the other two videos that went up after that that had snippets in them, they they didn't question those. Good, and it does do that because it does put a check into your box, like if, for lack of a better term, that the algorithm can refer back to the next time something happens. You know, it does see that you've already handled something and you handled it properly, so it's more ready to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and you know. Even with that, I there was no problem with them. Um, I could still do the video. They were just going to put commercials on it. And by yeah. golly, if I can't make no money, I, they're not going to make any money exactly. off of me. One hundred percent. I agree with you on a principle. A hundred percent on that. Yeah, and that's all it was—just principle. But that's yeah. something. Because uh, we got uh, uh, one like that too when I was doing uh, the uh, chronic illnesses and chronic pain uh, video, but I did it on purpose because uh, I knew that it would get to notice. It wasn't a strike, just to notice. But I used the trailer of the movie Unrest. But uh, the uh, money from the ad advertising they used to donate to uh, Chronic Pain Society and Fibromyalgia Society. So it was on purpose, you know, that all of the advertising that they would put on every time somebody would be watching, that money would be actually going to the uh, association. That was the only time I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I say, I've had a hand. As a matter of fact, as soon as my monetization is fully restored, it'll be sometime in June now, um, I have about 10 videos that were shared revenue that are all pulled right now, but they'll be back up right away. You'll, you'll see me tweeting out, these are back. <laughs> Here, here's, here's the band playlist. <laughs> and I've got, I think, some Beatles in there, uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Oh. Wow. So there'll be there'll be a few that people will, I think, will enjoy. <laughs> Did you follow the case with those? Uh, sorry, just to jump back to fair use for a second again. Did you uh, follow the case with the H3H3 uh, channel? They had the landmark case about fair use. I can't they say made, I, I can't say directly. They were the ones who they made of they made these reaction videos, but they don't just watch the whole thing. They would do so segments of it and then do you know mocking skits on the guys and stuff. And the guy tried to uh, sue them, and they ended up going to court, and uh, they won. And Phil DeFranco and those guys raised a ton of money for these guys to pay for their legal battle because it cost over two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they were basically fighting for everybody on YouTube because they were set as an example. So yeah. whatever would be the judgment would fall on everybody else. You know? <coughs> set precedent. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And they won in the end. So I, I didn't. I didn't go into detail on that. I knew something about that was going on. <laughs> Yeah, so it was great that they did that. You know, they really put themselves in the line. Yeah. And th that's why when I said to have fun now, they use that example. Like they set up until they really blew off the map. They could do all these things and nobody cared. But as soon as they got really big, that's the time that everybody starts trying oh, to. Oh, yeah. Get. And this guy did. He was a pure piece of garbage right away. You could see what he was in for. A channel that had, a you know, enough views to be noticed but wasn't going anywhere. And he looked at it as an easy cash day to try and comp in on them. So yeah. it's a good thing they won because that could have screwed a lot of things for all of us, small and yeah. big. Yeah, and that, that, that's the problem. You've got, I'm going to say probably 99% of 
us on YouTube are trying to follow the rules. Yes. We're not trying to do anything wrong. We're not trying to steal anything. That's right. You know. Yep. So, but you've got to, they've got to work with us so we can work with them. Of course, definitely. And fair yeah. use is important because we're not big as a broadcasting channel. We can't go in and just call it Warner Brothers and get the rights to something. So they've got to give a little leeway. I mean, I understand if you blatantly plagiarize it and just play the thing in its entirety. Yes, you're doing wrong. Oh, yeah. But if you want to review something, you should have the rights to do that. Well, to, to, to do a song, you have to have public performance rights and you have to have mechanical rights. Can you explain to everybody a little bit about that, if you don't mind? Because we were talking about that the other day. Okay. Performance rights means that you can now perform it in a public place with more than three people listening. You have to pay for the right to do that. I think it's stupid, but especially when it goes back a hundred years. Yeah. But after you, then the mechanical rights are those to put the video. Oh, there's a third one too. Mechanical rights are to reproduce it through speakers, which would be through the radio. Then you also have synchronization rights, which are to put you singing it or performing it, your video, with the audio. And you have to have a license to do all three things to be legal. Wow. And how do you go about getting those? Like well, that's a good question. That's the question. <laughs> you, can, you have to negotiate straight with the copyright holder for the synchronization. You can go to like the Harry Fox agency to get the performance rates. So it's there, there's no way, at least four years ago when I was looking, there was no real easy way to go get the rights. And if you did, you were going to pay a small fortune to post a video on YouTube that you're not going to make any money from. Yeah, that's that's kind that's of doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, the it hinders the whole process. It should so be, you know, proportionately to what you make if you do make. Yeah, and what, what which is what YouTube has gone and done with um, <clears throat> the revenue sharing. Yeah. Right. And people complain about that because YouTube won't tell you what the revenue share is. Yeah. That's because it's it's different with every one of the labels. Right. So they. And I imagine at some point they will probably have it in that little description. It will be a 2030 or, or you know, 2080 or whatever split, and then we'll know from there. But splitting revenue is better than getting nothing. Well, yeah, that's what it comes down to. It just nobody likes it when everybody's always kept in the dark, and that's something YouTube has got. And I understand on that point, I you're right, because it's always individual. Are you? But YouTube has done so much lately in the last two years of in the dark that now people are mistrusting everything that they say. <clears throat> Even when they are being legitimate, nobody knows whether to believe them or not. Well, part of it, too, is they don't know how to communicate. 100%. One, that, a company that size and have the PR system that they have set up is mind-boggling. That letter I got was like... <laughs> <laughs> For somebody that is supposed to be so sensitive to everybody's feelings, you sure don't know how to send the letter. <laughs> Maybe, you know, you folks there need a little sensitivity yeah. training. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, oh my. I've, I've sent a few letters in my day and I've told people where to go and exactly how to get there, but I've done it so they don't even know I said that. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> it's it's shocking for a company that size and something especially based in the arts. Like I mean, let's call it for what it is. It is an arts based business. It's amazing how they just can't seem to get it together when dealing with anybody. And it's not yeah. just us. I mean, it bothers us. But once again, I'm not standing up for the big guys. But imagine when your whole livelihood is running on this thing. How frustrating this must be by time. And they even have direct access to people there and get the same runaround. Yeah. You know? Because I think that gets lost a lot with the small ones. And I, I think I'm bringing that up because that's something that's been driving me crazy. I've seen the last two months with so much of the bashing on the big ones. 
Well, I mean, it's their livelihood. Of course they're going to fight tooth and nail for it, the same as we would if we were there right now. The same as the guy playing in a club, you know, in New York saying, oh, if I made it big, I'll bring everybody with me. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, they sound like Robin Hood. They're going to do everything on the, you know, be good to everybody. It's a business and they're earning a lot. You know, a lot of them have quit jobs to do this and time. And it must be frustrating when you feel like you're doing this, that you're helping a champ, helping a, a company's platform and you feel so disrespected in the whole process. Yeah. You know? And the, the only thing I can think is they are, we can't fathom the size of them. Yeah. I mean, they're that's international. Right. That's right. Uh, Number two search engine in the world after Google is YouTube. And Google owns YouTube, so they're really exactly. number one. <laughs> yep, that's right, 100%. <laughs> but people don't think of it as a search engine, but it is one. It is? I use it constantly all through my day to find out how to do stuff when I'm doing oh, it. I have learned more on YouTube videos. Oh. Than, than I did in college, I think, some days. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, how many times, do you, you know, my son, he had to change a wiper blade in his car. He had never done it before. What did he do? He hauled out his phone, and in two minutes, he found 18 different videos on how to change that certain wiper blade in that certain car. You can actually pick the one who explains it the best way you can understand it. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it's amazing, the, the wealth of information, and people share that information. Exactly. Exactly. Without a cost, without a membership fee, without anything. That's what's so amazing about the whole experience. And um, as a matter of fact, I've got one coming. If I get it edited, um, I have an office chair. I've had it for several years. And the foam rubber arm pads started to shred on it. Anyone that has an office chair knows over time they just... They always go there, yes. <laughs> I love that chair. I have had it for years. I've it fits my butt to a T now. <laughs> I have worn it or sat in it for work for years and years. Did you know you can buy replacement arms? No. Pads for twenty dollars or twenty four dollars, and there's two screws on each side, and you just unscrew them, screw them back on. No way. <laughs> I got a brand new chair for twenty four dollars. <gasps> I did a stupid little two-minute video just saying, here's the package, here's where I got it from. <laughs> Look, it worked. It's I love it. <laughs> oh, Amazing. That is so cool. <laughs> Who would have thought that you could? But I looked on the internet, and I've, as soon as I said replacement chair arms, <laughs> that came right up. That's really My cool. Because like, yeah. right? that's always the first thing to go on the chairs. It's, you know. No, but it's great how much stuff you can actually find now and do because yeah. of that, too. I mean, you know, there's always two sides to the, the metal or coin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm editing with Final Cut right now. I have learned everything there is to know or everything I need to know from YouTube. Yep. I agree. I studied graphic design and well, multimedia integration in 2000. I would have killed, literally, to have that wealth of information available at a click oh. of a button back then to learn. Oh, to it, yeah, it is just, it's just amazing how quick you can learn stuff. And in the IT side of my life, where I actually earn money, I, I have learned so much uh, in a short period of time without having to go to webinars, without having to go to yes. IT. You know, I've saved the company fortune over the years. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable, those shows. I know I used to have to go to some of those things, too. And, I mean, the money that was blown, and you have to write everything down, and, you know, all these things that you don't even have to bother with anymore. It streamlined it. Oh, yeah. You know? And it's yeah, it's just amazing the people that have done things that, uh, you know, that you're thinking about doing right now. It, just right there at your fingertips. It's just, it, it still blows my mind. Even the most bizarre question, like you know, how to replace a foot on a nineteen uh, in a two thousand three Samsung washer, and I'm picking the most bizarre thing I think of. And there's like list of people that's done that. It's like there's nothing you can think of even original now. You know, as a question that seems to stump it. There's always multiple versions of anything. Yeah, you know, like literally when our uh, washing machine broke, that's exactly what it was. So yeah. I put the serial, like the number um, of the make of the machine, and it's an old one too. And somebody had the same exact thing happening, and they had a solution. Like, what are the chances? But it was there. Yep. You know, it's unbelievable. 
it, yeah, it is. Well, it, it's more unbelievable that people take that five minutes to do it. Yes. You took the words right out of my mouth. Question two for you. Uh, do you think somebody can learn to play piano by uh, watching YouTube? And Well, I learned my note, and I had a player piano, and I learned how to do a lot of the fill-in from watching it play. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you can, If but you, you, it's only a piece of, of, of the learning curve. You have, to, you have to have some fundamental and cheap music. Even if it's just a lead sheet or a fake book. And what that is, is it's the melody line and it tells you what chord to play with. Nothing else. Okay. I agree with you. The same as for playing guitar. Like I use it sometimes, yeah. especially for solos and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a help, but it's not a godsend. It won't, it, you still got to be able to do it. You can watch it a thousand times, yeah. but you still have, to have the fundamentals to be able to yeah, do it. When I, when I do any kind of a show, I, I may be going through a song, but I usually say, you know, that I got this out of a fake book, what book, and then I just show more of the cording patterns I'm using. That you can learn. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah some, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you have to see that happen. Yeah. yeah. Same as a guitar, that one too. You can learn chords <coughs> and stuff like that, you know, you can learn positioning and but yeah, once it starts becoming more complex, you really have to know. Now you can learn scales and stuff like that, like runs. Oh and yeah. How to do them. All those fundamentals you can pick up along the way and start piecing together. But yeah, I agree, I agree a hundred percent with you. And there's some solos that I, I mean, I'm, I don't play as much as I used to, but like I can feel that, okay, I'm just not going to be able to pull this off because I don't play enough anymore. You know, I'm having trouble getting that feel for it. Uh, you can, the notes don't give you feeling, even if you watch somebody else playing it. It's you know, same with piano. I know it's it's not bending the notes like a guitar, but you're still working the keys in the same fashion, and you, that's a feeling. Now here here's something with the um, digital pianos. It's neat. You can change the temperament of them. Yeah, that's true. Eh? Yeah, there's multiple temperaments, and it's really near, neat because, in a sense, you can stretch the notes when yeah, you go into the some of the classical temperaments. And someday I'll do a video on just playing a couple songs through and doing a couple classical temperaments versus the modern ones. Well, that's even like dr electric drums. I mean, I was a drummer, and some of the drummers I knew like couldn't stand electric drums, of course, purists once again. But to me, I thought it was such a new form of expression that would come out of percussion you know it gave you these opportunities that before was always just limited to acoustic you know to be able to play and program the run off the slide you know be able to bend the skin a bit more sound and all these things and the, that to me is progression i think that's great i mean I'm, uh, it's fun to be able to break out of your mold and do new things oh yeah, oh, yeah. no i worked for uh well, I think you've seen I worked for a big music company for years. Mm, yes. And one of the lines we did are, was Korg uh, keyboards. So I was Korg Canada as well as Pearl and Marshall. And, the, and Korg had came out with the Oasis at the time. That was that $10,000 keyboard in the mid-2000s that had every keyboard that Korg ever made inside of it, plus, you know, new mold, modeling techniques and stuff. And yeah, that it had a touch screen, which was new at the time. That was color. That that's what amazes me is you know how how much they have evolved. Oh yeah, I I, I have a Casio Privia that I have mainly just if I want to go out somewhere. There's no piano. I've got one, and it is impressive for a six hundred dollar piano. Yeah, I five it's five hundred plus the band. stand made it six. I I just it just totally amazes me. Plus it's got all the extra features and it has MIDI in it, mm. and you know. Once you plug it into your controller, you've got all the other instruments you need if you want to go there with it. Exactly. That is one thing I'm wanting to do this summer, too, is to do a video in how they used to do an old-style piano. Really? Will be, yeah, my, my piano is a player, and it has um, the input, the keyboard has died a couple of years ago, so I'll be using the Casio to do the MIDI input, and then my piano will be able to play it back with the full expression. Oh, so that's amazing. 
and I think it'll be a neat video, especially for younger people that haven't seen it, because there is a lot of time that goes into recording that a lot of overdubbing. Mm -hmm. Back then, they didn't do it with, you know, they were punching holes in yep. a piece of paper to do it, but it'll still be a similar effect. Um, as a matter of fact, I have, with the dig starting, I have six player piano videos scheduled to start coming out on Mondays. Uh, that series I call my Mechanical Mondays. And believe it or not, there's actually an audience of people that like player piano music. Well, that's so cool. So you'll be seeing those. And anyone that wants to see me play live, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't watch it or anything like that. That's fine. <laughs> I think a lot of people find it extremely interesting. That's one of those, what you were talking about at the beginning, you know, somebody, somebody will watch something, like you'll watch something, and even though it's not your understanding or your genre, I think that will still be visually and audibly pleasing enough to catch people that wouldn't usually watch something like that would. So I think that's a great idea for yep. a video. And um, I've got, there, there's two styles of music that they played back. And this is, we're talking the 20s and 30s. They were um, straight piano rolls, and those were played without expression. They were just all the notes on or off. Then they had reproducing rolls, and I've got a couple of those in this batch. And those play like a person. They sound like a person. You have a full range of expression on it. Wow. That's so cool. And that's one of the neat things, too, when you start listening to it. When you don't have a performer, that helped me with my expressiveness. Uh, there's two things that you do to, to when you play music, at least on the piano. You vary your tempos, but you've got to begin and end at the same rhythm, same timing. If you don't, people will, it, it's disturbing. But you can vary a little bit in sight, and that adds color, and I do that. And the other thing is you can emphasize your melody over your right. accompaniment, and I do that. And... If you anyone that plays and they see my hands, I'm usually playing the melody in an octave. That gives me double emphasis on on just the on the melody line itself. Hmm. And hmm. that took years. <laughs> it it took years. To, definitely lots of work. <laughs> but but it's it's neat in the way it comes out because you can you can hear the difference, and that's where I think people enjoy what I'm doing is I've got that expression. Yes. I very. I was very gifted very fortunate to have an instructor that really pushed expression out of me and how to play the whole keyboard well expression is feeling you know that's what it comes down to yeah. and what do people gravitate for even if they don't play the instrument even if the genre is not exactly what they would usually listen to they can relate to feeling yeah you know and i and it, it i've had a couple comments on a couple of my videos where people say that they felt something or they can feel the emotion of it. And that's, I couldn't get a better compliment. Uh -huh. It feels good eh, when somebody really connects to what you do. <laughs> it you know, does. sense money, and I preach that all the time, could ever make you feel better than somebody who gets it. Yep. I had a video, uh, one of my tra first train ones was the one about the city train in Montreal, and it was short. I always wanted to shoot like a European style because they appreciate their city trains in Europe a lot more, so they have commercials just based on them. And I wanted something that had that feel, but with Montreal, because it is kind of a European city here. And somebody, I forget who was this day, wrote, you have this amazing way of making something so day-to-day -day into something so interesting. And I was beaming for the rest of the day, like I was telling oh, yeah. you about it. I come out in the kitchen, I'm like, you won't believe what he just wrote. Yeah. It was like winning the lottery, you know? He gets it. He gets it. You know, yeah. that's... it. it I, I know the feeling is... One other thing that amazes me, I, I've the negative comments I get. I don't know how many negatives you get, but I had one person that went on and told me how I've played it too choppy and I played it this way. And the description was exactly what I played. Right. I played it a little different style and I felt it had a different flow to it. And it's supposed to, and this guy went on and on and on. And uh, it's the fir first negative comment I ever got. It's probably been about four years ago. And it amazed me. I still go to this guy's channel. Do you know he hasn't got a single video up of how he would do anything? Mm. Wow. And then, and then you start thinking, why would anybody take that much time yes. to complain about something free when you can simply 
click to the next video. I agree. Uh, to this day, I'm mystified by that. I do not get it. It's, yep. I've only had one, honestly, one really negative comment. It wasn't negative. It was a guy that, yeah, this is going to sound bad. I don't mean to sound snobby. And there's a lot of people better at editing than I am, but I think that's where I shine. That's always been my kind of thing. And it was one of these guys like, oh, you got to work more with timing. And he, he was giving the names of what you call it. It's called beat matching and all this. And that's going to really improve you and that. And I'm like, seriously. And then I go and look at his channel and he's shooting everything with an old phone at like 720 and it's all over the place. <laughs> it's like, really like really well, yeah we do you know, it for, you know it's our daily job yeah um, I, i'm not the best and i see people do a also, lot better i'm not being so have here. education in it yeah you know, you know like, and, but it, that's how they make themselves perfect, feel better so it's true. like whatever i'm not gonna <laughs> listen to it i'm not gonna even grace you with an answer you know thanks for the updates so i'll take that in consideration it's like me going to you and saying guess what i learned how to play chopsticks and now i'm going to help you <laughs> you know learn how to master mozart i just got a 20 different <laughs> ideas. Gonna go. so, you know. <laughs> but people do that i mean because they are hiding behind a computer and they do have their insecurities and they if it's bad if it was really bad i'll just delete the comment like i'm not even going to reply to it i'm just like i, don't, I wouldn't want that on but it's been pretty good to say the. I can't think of much. To be honest, I'm glad yeah, I, that it could happen tomorrow. I, I don't have two. I, I've had a couple. The last one, I was going to delete because it just was. I just didn't think it was very nice, and I thought about it. And I thought, you know, no. If he wants to say it, leave it out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way. Just to leave it sit. Yeah. It, He's not hurting me in any, or could have been a she, but yeah. they're not hurting me in any way, shape, or form. Go ahead. And they came back a week later and made another comment. And really? I didn't, I just let it go. And I haven't seen anything since. And I thought, fine and dandy, you know, I'll just leave this. Sit. They tire themselves out like little kids. <laughs> you know, you I, well, I, I, the old adage, ignore them and they will go away. Yep. That's so true. <laughs> Oh, true. They're all truth, but it works yeah. so well. The that's, more you engage with them, the more fueled they become. That's why I say, like, in the chat here, you know, if somebody comes in in the odd time, and it's been very few times somebody's been a little not getting with the program, if you have a very good chat, they realize very quickly that nobody's even listening to them, and they just fade away because it's not helping their cause any, or, you know, they realize it's not going to work where they are. They end up falling on their face, so why chase them around? No, if they're abusive to somebody, I would step in right away. Yeah. That's a yeah. different story. Oh, I, like, I, I, yeah, that's usually when I make some comments and a side of me comes out that I don't usually let out too much. Well, that's but, good, but that's good because I I, 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 I try to be, I try to stay the person I, I want to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Which is not always easy or something because there are some people that can really push your patience. I mean, well. Then I've got, I've got, I'm guessing it's a subscriber. I have the thumbs down person. Right. Yeah, we all and have them. Well, you know, I, I went almost a year and a half before I got a thumbs down. Mm. And boy, that really hurt my feelings. And now I look at it, you haven't made it until someone doesn't like you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's a badge of honor. So <laughs> it right. is. I, I wait, and every one of my videos within 24 hours gets a thumbs down. That's Just so one. <laughs> That's so amazing. I love that. And it's true. That's the way to look at it. It's 100% because there's so many more thumbs up and so many more good comments and so many good people returning each time you do something. And well, you, I've, I've been following a, a younger guy. Saucy Sarcasm is uh, his channel. Yes. Hilarious. Love it. And he was he was talking about, I think it was him, but talking about the thumbs down. He said, "You have to realize these people took the time to watch your video, <laughs> right? So they they gave you view time. It doesn't matter." <laughs> and he's very right. That's all it is. It, yeah, it doesn't matter as long as the, as the ratio is higher for the likes. It doesn't matter if you have a dislike when there are uh, starts to have be more dislikes and you're monetized uh, that's when you get hurt more uh 
So it, it is and it's, it's not true at the same time because some people say, well, it doesn't matter at all about the dislikes. It doesn't matter as long as there are less dislikes than likes. That's why like uh, the other week we had uh, uh, the troll uh, invasion in Korea, uh, craft beer pours, I think. I uh, missed that. Yeah, that was hilarious, but awful at the same time. They had like 60, uh, I think they were from Germany, uh, trolls coming in and, and disliking uh, the live stream. And uh, they were actually coming on the Hangouts as well. <laughs> they were popping up and talking German, some of them English, and it was crazy. But they left like 160 or something dislikes. Um, you know, and he had like, we tried to get more likes, got like 30 or something. But uh, obviously, if he's not monetized, it doesn't matter. But at that point, if he would be, that would be worse. You know, we would might as well just delete the, the video. And I think he did afterwards anyway, uh, because that could actually hurt the channel. So you never know with those trolls. And I see them more and more coming. And I sometimes think that those dislikes are always from the same person, you know. Oh, I think so. Yeah. And just, well, it's a little thing called jealousy, I think, too. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Exactly. And, well, you know, with our group, with our group, we've got we've got good people. And, you know, I can go to any one of the channels. I don't have the chat up, but I can look at any one of those channels and they've got some quality stuff. Yeah, and that's what the jealousy is. Why are these people getting views? Why? Well, because they take their time and do they, they take time to do what they're to do their presentation. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I mean, sometimes the dislikes are so uh, like, how would you even dislike it? Like, you know, like something, I don't know, like sometimes there are people posting like some emotional stuff, I don't know, you know, about their parents or kids or, you know, like a personal thing a vlog, in a vlog. And, stuff. <laughs> and then the you TMI, go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then you go and dislike it, like, really? Really? <laughs> Or the other way around, like I've seen a couple places where people are vlogging again about their emotional things in life, you know, somebody passed away and people are not even watching it. So underneath of this emotional crying video is a uh, thumbs up. I like the video. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> you didn't even pay attention what was the video about. Like it was the saddest video ever. The person was crying on the video. And, <laughs> and you leave the comment, thumbs up. I love the video. Like, how dumb. <laughs> uh, well, <clears throat> excuse me. There, there's one thing I don't get. The drama videos. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So no time for that at all. At all. I... I'm really trying to perk my day up. I mean, you know, I don't need to hear that your dog died, your cat died, your your wife's best friend got run over by a lawnmower. I don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, who did it, though? You know, in reverse three times. <laughs> uh, maybe it was mother-in-law. You know, there's, well, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But there's a lot of out there. And as we were starting uh, this conversation with that, uh, you know, there are thousands of views to the feral cats giving birth to kittens, you know. Uh, and at the same time, there's almost no views to amazingly edited or, or documentals or things like that. And it's still not understandable why the proportion is such, you know. Sorry, I had to leave for a sec. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. I was listening to you as I can we hear you. We were talking to... about driving over the mother-in-law with it. I, I was laughing in the kitchen. <laughs> I have you on the home theater system, so I can hear you in the kitchen. I was laughing while I was getting my stuff. <laughs> you guys are you guys are doing good. I feel bad about coming back. I feel like a third wheel now. No, no. <laughs> it's okay. We weren't talking about you yet. No. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you get some juicy stuff on me. Well, Miss um, Pat, Patsy uh, has some, some stuff she was going to share later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Patsy. <laughs> I got a question, Patsy. Yeah, I think so. I think so. 
<laughs> get a puppet finish now. That's how my day's been going, folks. <laughs> 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 oh my god almighty oh it's, it's, it's amazing the group that we have you know and like i said that's from the beginning there's so many very different channels it's amazing how through this whole universe we found each other and i use the example of groups is because youtube is like a constellation and there's hundreds of thousands of constellations in this galaxy there's people that we'll never even get a chance to meet. It's amazing how we kind of all found each other when you think about it. you know. And we survive around each other, and we watch each other, we support each other and talk. And there's groups right beside us that have no idea that we exist. Yeah. And in those groups right beside us, they have the same thing going on. 100%, the same, the same ideologies, the same uh, thing that they don't know nothing about us and the way they're trying to grow in their own groups and all that. It's, it's a really weird microcosm, and it's hard to wrap your head around. Like you said a while ago, you put it very well. It's almost like we just can't even fathom what's going on in YouTube because of the size of it. It's like trying to understand the universe itself. Well, we're like needles in a stack. Each each one of us is a needle in a huge stack because yeah. it's, it's 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 not mind grasping even how many people videos are there. So there is no point. Like it's so unimportant. Our thousand or whatever, fifteen hundred views is such a minuscule uh, subs. You know, it's such a minuscule thing. Yeah, yeah. in the scheme of things. In the yeah. scheme of things, like who cares about <laughs> us or what do we think? Like nobody cares in a bigger. Uh, you know, element of YouTube. Except for that one person with the thumbs yeah, up. That's right. <laughs> actually, maybe they they care the most, actually, out it's of true. everybody who is uh, subbing. It, it, it takes a lot of passion to watch a video and then put a thumbs down, so I guess it you don't want it. I, <laughs> went, um, I, I went to a couple of uh, Rant Jam's live streams mm. talking about different communities. Yeah. And anyone that has not been to one of his streams, it is an experience. Yes, I got them. They're interesting. They're great. I went to and followed some of these channels, and it's he's got a lot of people in India, and it fascinates me, and Arabic, and it fascinates me. I can't understand a word they're saying, mm. but how their videos are just like what we're doing here, but culturally different at the same yeah. time, and it, it's just it's fascinating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, okay, you were talking about the different clicks and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would never fit in because I, I don't understand, but wow, yeah. it was just neat to watch. Exactly. It's a whole nother, and I mean, that's what's weird about it because for AdSense, you it sounds so biased, but you really want as many North Americans watching as possible because that's what pays the bigger money for advertising. And that's what happens with channels in South America, in uh, Africa. They have channels that have multi-million followings and dedicated followers, but they barely make enough to even pay the bills because mm -hmm. the ad sense onto it is so much lower than what it is here. The most I made was on a video uh, with uh, AdSense wasn't in the United States, though. Really? It, no, it was – I'm thinking it was South Korea. I had one video and I made like three dollars on an ad in South Korea. Maybe because there were so few videos that were advertised over there that it paid a premium. Yeah. But I mean, they also too they have a pretty big market as well. Like, and they are pretty consumer based South Korea, so that would make sense too. Just as like a rule of thumb, you want to try and keep your North American ratio pretty yeah, high. That is, yeah, it, it just it shocked me on the one, and it was the very first video I made any money on. Mm. It was like the very first ad that ever popped out went to South Korea. Now, it, maybe they watched that one of those, you know, skipped commercial. Maybe they watched it all the way through. I don't yeah, know. Dedicated <laughs> as much or have ad blockers on and that stuff. It, it could have also been someone on a military base. I, You know, it, all YouTube does is tell you what country it's in. Yeah, but either way, still, it paid some. Uh, yeah, it just it shocked me with, with how much money was there. But yeah, with with me, most of my videos are viewed in the United States, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, same here, Canada, North America. I had uh, I'm actually losing a bit on Canada and gaining on the states. I've noticed. Um, same as women. The weird. The weirdest thing happened was I actually had a pretty representative demographic for men and women, which was seventy thirty, which is about what YouTube usually runs: seventy percent men, thirty percent women. Up until the day we started live streams. And our women went way down. 
Yeah. And I still can't understand how that ever happened. It's, like, it's getting a little bit back now yeah. slowly, but uh, yeah. Like <laughs> like we literally started focusing on women cha in channels, like getting to know them to try and bring up back up our numbers. Yeah. And I don't understand why the live stream drove that down so much. I'm very surprised on that. Well, maybe, maybe women don't have a, as long of a, what's the word I want to say? Attention span. <laughs> But my numbers have gone up for puppets. Well, I would believe that. <laughs> that demographic's growing well. So. <laughs> so there you go. A little learning, a little behind the scenes for you all. <laughs> Poor Patsy. <laughs> I love you, Patsy. <laughs> like, oh, I, even, I even feel bad when I say it. For the love of God, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I feel like I got to really apologize. Like I let Patsy down or something. <laughs> this, is, this is another part of the demographics not quite coming clear to me why. But... <laughs> so welcome to the twisted warp world of Andrew. <laughs> But yeah, no, it really does. In all seriousness, that really bugged me, and I tried for days to figure out how that happened because I was very good at keeping. I was very proud of that because I kept the perfect almost ratio of men to women in YouTube. And yeah, well, as soon as we started live streams, which you think would actually have brought more women, in theory, because you know more chatting, more interaction, which women tend to gravitate more towards, the numbers just seem to go down more. Because I did a lot of scenic videos, and even though there were trains, they're still kind of, you know, the most part was like those gas bay windmill trains and that. There's still a lot of scenery around, so it seemed like they liked those type of videos. Uh, YouTube is a funny business, and you, and you really got to pay attention to your demographics because they are important. And any big YouTuber, that'll be the very first thing they tell you on the first day is your analytics are everything. You know, pay attention to where it's going. Yeah, I was uh, I was on Social Blade. Uh, I've been on there for quite a while. Someone tweeted to them, and they had just joined, okay. and talking about how bad Social Blade was. Well, you, if you use Social Blade, you know it. You got to be on it a while before yeah. it can start to. And I think it's pretty darn accurate. Me too. <clears throat> I, I have no problem with the way they rank channels. It makes sense. Like PewDiePie is number one in social, you know, in uh, views in the world but he's not number one in their social ranking. And that shows how they're ranking things. It does make sense. It's what's relevant and what's working at this time, not what your legacy is. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and that's what you want. I mean, that's how you base if you got to make changes or not. It's great if you were perfect three years ago, but if you're doing horribly now, that's what you want to know. Yep. You're and, doing horribly. and things change. If one thing I noticed too, after my heart attack, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the first video I posted, I lost subscribers. And my oh. demographic went, oh, I hadn't posted in a while. Yeah. And that I've learned in time from other people, if you don't post for a while, you will lose subscribers when you post again because suddenly you pop up at the top of the list. Right. And they don't have time for you today. And usually what it is, they've moved on to something else and forgot you were even there. Yeah. Because some, I don't know if anyone really uh, under, that's watching understands how the notifications work in YouTube. If you watch a channel regularly, they tend to put it first on your list of what to watch next. Or mm -hmm. I even get notifications on channels I don't have the little bell pressed on. Yeah. Unfortunately, YouTube does fail at doing it in a timely fashion. <clears throat> and now they're even changing it again. Now they're playing with it a second time. We're in the experimental stage again where it's no more chronologically. <clears throat> they're starting to go in the way of Facebook and everything. And the same H3H3 yeah. H3 podcast uh, was just raising this issue this week. Uh, they were all in a panic mode, really, because especially for the bigger uh, channels, it, it really counts now, too. Yeah. Like they said, they're taking away the last step, you know, that you had to keep a steady subscriber yeah. by doing this. 
but that's why it's a free platform really i mean uh, you yeah. know we there are wishes that we we would want them to adjust something but really it's a free platform and it's not we don't own anything there it's theirs we just they let us use it that's what it's all yeah. down to you know so when people do complain about oh my god like why are they doing this and i don't know you know i'm doing these videos and they are all cutting you know like <laughs> like that would be but uh, it, it's not ours. You don't own the stuff on there. And and right now, there's nothing out there to replace it. Nope. No, but it's slowly. And, and not not for this purpose, anyway. No, but it's. I think it's branching off more into the categories. The same as TV was. You know, there was two cable channels, and then all of a sudden, there were a whole bunch of uh, um, you know private channels. Yeah. And then the same here. There was a bigger YouTube, and now they're all branching into more categorized video streaming or uh, video uh, uploading platforms. So it, it's going to go the same way as it was with TV. Just now, it, it is on internet. You know, I think. Oh, I think you're right there. TV is not going to be as it is much longer. No, this is this is our TV, really. But that's why the format becomes the same way the TV became. You know, it started with two channels yeah. and then it was hundreds. Well, the same here started with YouTube, but now it's kind of branching off for different uh, different channels. The same as I, I think that that's not going to be long till they start charge us for having the videos on us and i have said that before because look at all these channels that are not monetized right now that means that those channels are for free uploading and taking over the space on their servers why they don't get money from them so i think pretty fast they're going to start have subscription or something that you are limited amount of videos only that you can have or something yeah i i, I can kind of see that coming in yeah. that, so that's just like with the live streaming yeah they're they're gonna have to do something there because can you imagine the bandwidth that's being occupied by channels that really aren't offering anything back? Well, exactly, and also yeah. stored afterwards in the, in the server. Yes, uploaded. So like that's why they changed from twenty four hour streaming to eight now because you were able to do it like basically twenty four seven, and people were doing it just streaming the music, for example, recorded music. Uh, but now we can only stream eight hours, you know, so that they are changing it and definitely oh, there, there is a change too on that. Uh, I think you guys were part of that a couple of weeks ago. They've added that DVR function and it can be several hours. I think Andrew lost it over there. But it can be several hours before the full stream is available. Yes, and it is. And the longer the, the stream is, the longer it takes to actually being uploaded afterwards. And then you can you lose the time in between because it can't be really watched because it's so chopped. Nobody can leave the comments either. So that kind of sucks in a way. But at least there is an option there. I'm trying to keep it civil here. I'm sorry, Ron. That's such an idiot. He makes me laugh. We were talking about your beard. That's why I don't want to look at this chat half the time because I know it's no good if I do. <laughs> Bottle caps was comparing my beard to a uh, part of a woman's body. <laughs> Just always so flattering. <laughs> so I told him people men with a bald head and pointy ears remind me of another part of a woman's body. <laughs> Yeah, it falls really into the conversation that we're having. They're very classy guys. So my deepest apologies to you, Rob. I tried to stay away from the chat. <laughs> I saw hook, line, and sinker for that one. So this is why you tell us not to watch the chat. Okay. That's right. 100%. Oh, you'll, you'll re Patsy, oh no. Patsy, you're right on time. We were talking about oh, you. Oh, no. All, all the way through this live stream. <laughs> Oh God, Patsy! We needed you. We were talking about oh. uh, your uh, yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, Andy, are you okay? <laughs> okay, Patsy. Just so you know, Andrew has admitted he wants to pull your string. <laughs> <laughs> Married couple, Patsy, you're the one. 
And just remember, everyone, they thought they wanted me back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't oh even my look. God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh baby. Oh. This is so oh. wrong. Yes. Oh, oh my there God. Goes the show. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Like, exactly. Oh, my God. Oh. The past transition. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't even look now. I can't. Oh, even... oh, oh no, I'm so you so... don't want to know. I'm so sorry you heard that, Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, it's oh, sometimes oh, we geez. fly into adults and push them the power oh. show, and it happens in the oh. span of two seconds. Oh so. my god, that was so funny. <laughs> Ron, you're killing me here. <laughs> Oh. I bet you won't be able to watch her videos now. No, I can't. Okay, I want. I just want to tell her it's going to be okay. <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> Not to listen to it them. Even worse. I know. I know. I just. Want, I want to protect her. I just don't want her to have to okay, go through this. Stop talking. It sounds worse every time you say that. Oh dear God! Oh. oh, this is going really well. <laughs> well, now you have a great outtake for the next time I come on. Yes, yes, thank you. You oh. definitely got the top of the reel. Congratulations! <laughs> to you. Uh, I don't know if I could be in the same room as. You. Oh, I didn't do anything, Patsy. Lord no. God, I <laughs> mean for this. He's a uh, that's girl. right. That's right. No, oh, no. My God, leave, leave Patsy alone. <laughs> Yeah, you came right in on time, Patsy. I don't know. Started with beards and yeah, oh I don't know how it went to this. And oh. it was kind of Jeez. Oh my god. Well, there you go, folks. <laughs> oh my god. I'm waiting. Like hands down, congratulate you. Like I say, you're at the top of the list when we do a compilation reel. <laughs> the sad part is, I'm the one who's gonna have to edit it and put it in against myself. <laughs> that's that's the real sad issue here. God. A shot from Patsy's live and then Rob saying Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, God, that was funny. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, yes. I didn't realize I that. Was, damn it. <laughs> oh. Well, that's oh. a great. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I, I farewell. Uh, <laughs> 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 I don't know what to say anymore. Yeah. I have really, really <laughs> speech. I'm about to come out of this now. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, you didn't do it, so. Yeah, no, wow. not at all. These are all innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't smoke anymore. I'm sorry. Right now, I think I really need one. <laughs> uh, it's okay. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a good one. I give you credit on that. So. <laughs> Rob, you've been, you've been, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to say. You anymore. have many sides to you, yes. I must say. I, I must I, say. And in all seriousness, I am so glad to have you on tonight because, like I say, you're one another one of the I'm, ones I'm, we've known since the beginning. I'm glad <laughs> that would have been enough to kill a stream on some channels. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 this no. one you just boosted our ratings. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I think they're secretly waiting for it every evening because yeah, yeah. they get disappointed. When it they do. <laughs> You can see it though. Oh, good night. You know, like, a bunch of wimps wouldn't do it. Yeah, I don't know. Who was the one that called it Adult Swim with Fosha? I forget now. Yeah, because one of the nights we were really, it was, went really raunchy there after 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then adult, adult Swim with Fosha said. So. That's well, good to have a laugh now uh, and then. That <laughs> That's what keeps us on our feet. <laughs> That's what it should be. <laughs> but no, but it was, in all honesty, it was really nice having you on. It's, uh, we, like I say, we've known each other pretty much, I can safely say, I think since the beginning of the apocalypse, we yeah. kind of all got in together. And uh, we've worked tirelessly at what we do. I think we both respect each other's oh, work. So, my, you, you, know. you, two, you two do a lot. I mean, just to set one of these up, you have to put probably four or five hours in just getting the contacts back and forth. And Oh, oh yeah. You know, that, there's time, in, and you do it every night. <laughs> yeah, six nights a week, you know, it's, I don't mind it. I mean, we, what do I say? You know, like it's, sometimes you're so tired and it's like, I can't do any more of these. Like, you know, next week we should say we're going to start spacing them out. 
but then we miss you guys. We get Sunday night, we're always referencing you guys, yeah. and it feels like we're playing hooky from school. You know, like we shouldn't be just sitting there watching a movie. We should be getting ready to put another live stream up. But I think it is important to leave at least one night open because it is a lot. It's, <coughs> you know, our kids had to change their schedule. They go to bed a bit earlier now to let us do it. And But it's worth it. You know, I, I really wanted to put out something that everybody seems to enjoy and they'll be able to come back because if they have new spots, say you have a new subscriber and they like your work, eventually, hopefully our interview with you is going to come back into the to the recommended videos oh yeah I'll come and see you come and see you being interviewed and learn more about you so it's a win-win for everybody so, uh, at, at least until two hours and 53 minutes in <laughs> he's on man he's shut the back. i don't care what anybody <laughs> I don't know. I don't think the Amish know him as well as he thinks they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I said there's yeah. so many sides. That's what I know. He's like an octagon. Speaking of Amish, we, we drove through uh, Amish country last week to, to go to look at an open house. And you know you're in Amish country when you drive by Yoder's Farm, Yoder's Dairy, Yoder's Furniture, Oh my God. Oh my God. Sounds like Soviet time. And, and, and you dodge horse pellets. Uh, <laughs> wow. And you have to wait for the buggy to get by. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it is that's hilarious. Everywhere we looked, it was Yoder. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I would love to do more of it. I haven't been, I, well, I passed by in Phil, uh, out in uh, uh, Pennsylvania on the outskirts of it. I've seen it in Ontario some, but I would really like to go visit all my Yeah, Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm so uh, mystified always. When we went to your um, cousin, you know. The about, Mennonites, uh, yeah. The Mennonites, yeah. And you could they're see different. Some of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's different, but you could see some of it, and I was so mystified. Like, it's just so different. And I never really was, like, I, I knew that there are Amish when, when, you know, when I was in Latvia, but it wasn't really popularized about what is it. It wasn't every day part you know mm -hmm. like i it was part of my education about uh, about states you know yeah uh and that's it but uh, it's so just interesting you know a, a little thing about uh, the amish is they don't like or they don't believe in having their pictures taken yes they think it captures the soul and it's, it's a sign right. of energy now the them. mennonites i don't believe are that strict yeah they're kind of three quarters of the way there type of thing. And they yeah. still will have vehicles in certain areas. There's more, you know. And because we live in the country, we, we have this, we had a conversation a few years ago, you know, which came first, the Amish or the Mennonite? And so I spent a whole Saturday researching it all the way back to Germany. Okay. And the Amish separated from the Mennonites came across to the United States and started their sects here. Yeah, because there was persecution, I think, at that time. Then some of the rowdy Amish separated and became Mennonite. So they divided and redivided into the two sects. That's interesting. It, 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 yeah, it was kind of fascinating because I didn't expect that, oh, they started as one group, came here as a different one, and separated back into the first. <laughs> that's wow. that's kind of neat, really. I didn't know it is. The, it could split like that. That's very cool. Yeah, I learned a lot about Mennonites in reading all of that too, and it's uh, they, they 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 have very strict religion. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say yay or nay there. It's just it's and funny. the Mennonites primarily are not into being boastful. Yeah. So you will see Mennonites with cars, for example. Yes, exactly. But they're not. But they can't be boastful about it. Or prideful, as they say. It's, no, it's just, they don't it's very different. Into Mustang, and you know, it's not the GT model there. That's. But, but I will tell you, all of those people make wonderful pies. Yes. <laughs> oh. We, yes. We, there's a horse and buggy down the road from us that we get pies from every now and then. <laughs> there's a big movement going on here now that because Ontario became like, uh, is become so expensive that the, the Amish were looking for new grounds and they ended up getting them. I don't know if you know of uh, there's one of the provinces here in Canada called Prince Edward Island. It's the smallest one and it's out surrounded in the Eastern, Eastern Canada. It's an Island. And um, 
they actually were recruiting them because it's a very touristy island and they were the perfect match for it. The land was cheaper. They take great care of the land. It acts, adds to the tourism draw. So they actually set up initiatives to bring them down and introduce them to the lands mm -hmm. and gave them like tax benefits and all oh, these wow. things to try and draw them in. Yeah, and there are some already there. Yep. Uh, yeah, they were uh, they changed the, the roads and put the signs on beforehand even. Yep. So, uh, yeah, and the people traveled there and some Amish. When I came home by train this time, when I uh, inherited the house, there was also vehicles and I had to go down and get one and bring it back. So I went on the train. It's been years and there was actually a couple of Amish people on the train that were, I assume, moving down or between going there. So, yeah, it's kind of cool the way it works out that way, you know. So, I mean, they do benefit the, the place. I mean, they do keep it well-maintained land and stuff like that, and it's great um, for tourism. One, one thing, too, that is not real well-known, uh, they pay 100% of their own medical expenses. Oh. oh. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that either. That's interesting. They Ooh. don't believe in insurance. I knew they didn't believe in insurance, but I never thought about it. Someone that worked in one of the hospitals explained that. You would see Amish in there, and they, they always paid cash. Okay, okay, okay. Huh. It's, it's like, an amazing thing. <laughs> you see, that's the thing, like, kind of in Canada, it's pretty much free health care. So that's why I never thought of that part of that. That's why. But, yeah, that's true, right, for the states, especially. They go and pay cash so they don't have any in Imagine though, and yeah, they don't. Uh, but imagine if you needed like ICU for a couple of weeks or something like yeah. that. Yeah, help. Yeah, I don't know how any details other than, you know, I don't know if they have a community fund or how they pay for it, but it's they they pay for it. Huh. Well, I know they do some money sharing, like for any revenues that are gained through like sale of farming, like products yeah. or as rugs, and then a lot of the money goes back into the community. Very little is kept for themselves, and I think that's how they. And it's a shame because you get channels like Discovery Channel and TLC that's just been murdering these people's culture yes. for the last five years, like capitalizing on it and turning them into basically, you know, a, a show. A show, not a show, but I mean, well, desecrating the whole thing. I mean, I'm sure they don't do everything right, but yet they don't deserve what they've been put as on TV. It's it's disgraceful. Yeah, it's you know, not that I have a. First, other than living around them, you don't. They're they're, they're nothing like what you see on TV. No, they're exactly. Very quiet, reserved people, and they don't. And English is not necessarily their um, first language either. No, exactly. No, for sure. they're, they're a version of German. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, Dutch. Uh, what do they call it? Some. Uh, I can't. Yeah. Think. Yeah, know. but nobody really talks. So. Uh, no, like no. That, like it's no, but their that's own the name version. of it. It's, yeah. it's a Dutch. Uh, yeah. Um, not Amish Dutch, but there's a name, and I just it's saluting me right now. But it is it was disgraceful. Like there was one show on Discovery Channel called Amish Mafia, and I mean, it was the most ridiculous thing that God ever put a, gave a person a chance to put on this world was to watch this show. I mean, it, it was insane. Like I mean, how could anybody even believe it was true? And I feel bad for those people because they don't even see that they're being portrayed this way. You know, like they they can't even defend themselves properly. That's what I think is so sad about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, because they don't, they don't, they won't watch it. Exactly. So they're either oblivious that it's going on, you know, for the most part, or the ones that come back from like Rumspring, and even Rumspring and that they turn it into like the most disgusting feat of. It's not that bad. They don't go all of them. Don't go that wild. And I mean, it's I don't know. I just thought it was horrible. I thought it was a real insult to a, a people, in my opinion. And. It would be like showing Native Americans today and showing them like they were, dicta you know, dictated a movie 50 years ago. Yeah. Doing it today and trying to say that's real life. You know, nothing in fact. Oh, uh, but I guess that's the world we live in, right? Yeah, it's all about profit. We talk about YouTube and all the stupid things that are done, but we're always forgetting, too. There's a lot of big companies in, in the, the main media that are doing the exact same level of stupidity as well. Yeah, it's um, it, it 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 seems like it's just growing. I guess because we, I guess because there's too many choices now. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. agree so much. And sometimes it's hard to, um, I think, distinguish what is, so to say, stupidity from the knowledge. Or, um, 
and because for example our son uh, likes to watch the scientific like discovery type of shows on youtube and i uh so i like them too so one night i was watching you know looking for some documentaries and you start watching and it seems like a legit documentary about um, you know how earth was made or something like that but then as you watch you realize it's actually made by some uh, kind of church or religious uh organization and they're actually pushing their agenda through this seemingly and not just church, but a fringe movement more like a lot of times and stuff yeah like that and they're pushing it. Yeah. it through this seemingly legit scientific movie documental about how whatever you know earth was made or what the stars are and so on yeah. so how can you because it's no disclaimer there really you know and it doesn't really say it right away how can you distinguish that you know yeah it's hard i think to understand sometimes it is there are so many videos and choices and options of everything you know yeah it, but one of the things though too is especially with youtube there's a lot of people in the world that don't share your view of course <laughs> it just it's one of those things i come from a small community and other than the few times i, I i've been to mexico i've been to juarez so i've been to the actual not not the place you want to visit part of Mexico mm -hmm. and but that was very limited but when you get out there you just other than that I live in my little community with everyone kind of the same so values and the same right. thinking and yeah. it, it's 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 interesting and I've had to take a step back and you know listen because there's other viewpoints there's other things to look yeah. at that's right I agree with you. And growing up in a small town and living most of my life in a big city, you know, I see that. And now, especially when I go back home, I see that, you know, from the outside looking in more, you know, that it's, uh, that's why small towns usually don't do very well with change. They like things kind of working the way it's working. And even if it's for the better, it takes them a long time to warm up to that because yeah. they kind of all work in the same run and change usually means bad right away. And then sometimes they'll get used to it and two years down the road they'll be like oh that was the best thing and i said we should have did it from the beginning but it's just a normal way and small towns are everywhere. like her we go visit her family in uh, eastern latvia and there's no different there than it is where i grew up in eastern quebec small towns are small towns are small towns wherever you go you know they have there's still that mentality in that same time those people they, they, they may uh they may knock you down, but they'll be the first ones to pick you back up. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. so, it's not all bad. It's a trade-off in everything. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the grass is always greener. You know, like that's the type of thing. Like when I'm down home, back home, I feel sometimes, oh, everybody's in your business. is driving me crazy. But then you're up here and you're wishing, God, I wish I had a neighbor who knew who I was, you know, yeah. to kind of help out. When I first moved to the community I'm in now, that was the first thing the neighbor said, we aren't nosy. But we all know if anything's going on, <laughs> and you know, I know I knew what that meant. I come from a small town; they'll yeah. keep the eye on the place. I, I'm I'm single, and if I don't, they don't see anything moving around the house for a day or so. They'll probably check on me. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> especially if it's an odor. <laughs> And it's not a good intention. I mean, it's not done out of malice. It's just the way of being. You know that's and you don't have all the services around so you tend to be more relied on your neighbor and then those things as well like volunteer fire departments my dad belonged to one for years you know it was such an establishment that we're so proud of to have that because it was everybody coming together because the other one fire station could take 20 minutes to get there and by then yep. you lose your house yep you know, you know? yeah yeah the, I, i'm in a small city we have a fire department here but i grew up with all volunteer okay okay and it's a great thing. It's a great community thing. You know, they take a lot of pride in, you know, the guys always have their badges out. They want to, you know, they're really proud of it. Uh, so you couldn't ask for a more dedicated fireman, even more than yeah. somebody who's trained and well-trained, because these guys literally do care about this community and everybody in it. They know each other intimately. So, no, there's good things. There's, there's, oh, there's yeah. good and bad in everywhere you go. Everything is, a, you know, there's always a trade-off in everything. And that's, nothing's perfect. Well, I, yeah. 
I think we're gonna let you go. You've been way so generous with your time and way too. Oh, I've, enjoy I've enjoyed myself. Uh, oh, like it's been such a pleasure been, after all it's this. It's been time. a pleasure for me too. It's uh, we definitely once again once you have the house built, work your mom in over the summer yeah. with other videos because we definitely definitely would love to have her on when the house is ready. Uh, I'll I'll, tr I'll try to get her to share some Snapchats. Maybe maybe I'll have a mom Snapchat video. <laughs> oh, that's great. gonna be good. <laughs> You definitely let us know the moment it comes out because I'm looking forward to oh, it. Oh, I will. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to get a lot of laughs. I know the little snippets I put on Facebook, everybody just loves. <laughs> I love it. I'm so glad we got to connect tonight like this because it's been a, honestly a long time coming. We've known yes. each other for a while. Oh, yeah. I felt bad when you folks invited me a couple, three months ago. I just had too much going on at that moment to do it. Life is life. We always, that's our expression. You've probably heard us say it lots. So, you know, uh, life comes first and everybody's time is important. So anytime right. you share with us is much appreciated when you can. Wait. Fingers crossed it all works well with the house. Oh, yes. there is it no will. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Uh, the next video is all about financing and then the real videos come. Well, oh, we're perfect. looking forward to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. We okay. really enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm glad you had me. I'm glad I got to spend some time with you tonight. Thank you. Pleasure was all ours, my friend. You take care and please keep in touch, okay? I will. I will. You guys look forward to new uh, host videos coming up in the near future. So mm -hmm. have a great Bye. night. Bye. Yep. You have a wonderful night. Thank Bye. you. Bye now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's... That was so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. We were we planning on a, on a long chat um, because. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Rob was saying about with his heart condition. Yeah, I so know. I'll go to bed uh, earlier. And, yeah. Uh, you know, life and health first. But we do appreciate. Um, thank you so much. It was a really very nice conversation. It was. I loved it. That was a nice, relaxing Friday yeah, night chat. Just, you know, like by the cup of coffee or, yeah. you know, just in a. And that's what I like about it. It just feels like people are in our living room and we're just chatting about things. I just couldn't look at the screen any. I couldn't look at the chat anymore. I had to distance myself because I just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, well, now we're talking about Eastern hmm. European influx into England with Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a little bit more a uh, serious note. Polynesian right. vlogger, hi, hello. Uh, by the way, we mm -hmm. did the shout out at the beginning for you. Uh, thank you for the video. Yes. Uh, for our fifteen hundred, thanks God I stumbled upon it today. <coughs> Otherwise, we would have never known it. And since you are a regular here, here I'm gonna say it to you: please, please tag us next time or yes. send us the video so we, we know that you did it. We were so touched that you did it. We feel awful that we didn't get to say something when you first did it. So yeah, and it's not that we don't. You know, guys, I we are trying our best. And I'm not trying to feed you any bull on this one, but like now we've grown a lot and it's six live streams a week. It's not, we're looking for pity. We just feel really bad that I don't, we don't, there are some that slip to the cracks and we don't get to watch. So anything like that, I really appreciate you telling us because we'll be right there in a moment's notice as we're never missing because we don't want to see it. Uh, it's our pleasure to see it. So. Yeah, I I, yeah. I scheduled it for a retweet. Uh, I think tomorrow or the day after. Uh, so, but yeah, definitely because then we can thank you properly, be excited yes. about it, and retweet it. So please, if you do the effort of doing, we were it, really touched that you we did were it. Really touched. You know? Please let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was very nice. So thank you. Yes, and thank you, Marcel. Yes, fifteen hundred. Yes. Um, Sorry, I'm just. Yeah, 1500 is still hard to believe. Well, that night we we did it around supper time. We played the video, and then, of course, we went online to celebrate it. We went back down to 1499 and back and forth. But yeah, that was something, yeah. Still technically 1500 Oh, don't be sorry. No, uh, my we, God, I no. Wish I, we were sorry that yeah, we yeah. didn't see it right away when you posted. Yeah, no, no, you have nothing Please, to be sorry nothing about. nothing to be sorry mm -hmm. about. We just wish we would have seen it earlier. I feel bad when you go and do effort yeah. like that. We're not there to to thank you for it because yes. it was such so appreciated. Thank you so much. Um. I used to like the bar the, the 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 banter with the Polish. Uh, yeah, there were lots of people that started to go to England. I know specifically from Latvia. They were started to go there uh, in the summer for strawberry picking, and then they were going there for a couple months uh, for the season of strawberries and coming back, you know, with pretty good money. 
comparing to what we had in our wages then. And then I think it continued for like three, four years. I had a whole bunch of family and friends that were doing it. And then three, four years later, everybody's starting to move there because whoever went there came back was talking about the wages, you know, comparing to what we had in, in Latvia. Mm. And uh, so people started to just immigrate there. So I have cousin that lives there that uh, now her mom lives there too. And I mm. think her brother lives there too. I have friends that uh, live in, in uh, like they're scattered now all across Europe, but specifically in England, I think most of uh, Latvians in general yeah, who immigrate the to Europe do immigrate to England. So mm. I'm not surprised when you say that you had a Latvian at work because mm, yeah they're everywhere <laughs> especially in england they're the biggest place where philip i agreed to rob was an excellent listen as such a uh i don't know there's just something there's, he's got that soothing voice there he's just nice to listen to like tom when he's through. he reminds me so much with his mom about david letterman and his mom like i, I just was uncanny yeah i can just picture them like yeah uh, that's a that, yeah. that was a great com uh comparison because yeah <laughs> Uh, but and then the other side of it, that, that, yeah, that, yeah. Oh my god, oh, that's just so, killing me. That's what I love about this. It's so great, you is know. Is Patsy still here? Um, and not in the chat. Um, is, oh. And super great chat tonight, Love and Epic. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for coming uh, back again. Uh, welcome anytime. Mm. Uh, just kicking back and, and having fun yeah. time. Fun and relaxing time. Sometimes, sometimes it goes ranchy. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel bad now. I didn't say goodbye to Patsy. <laughs> I think she slipped away. Yeah. Quietly. <laughs> oh, you all put me in a bad light in front of Patsy. So that's well, she just happened to appear <laughs> right in that spot. I don't know how they do that sometimes. We have had it numerous times when people appear right after. I thought you asked her to come. I didn't. Uh, and this was why. so funny. Uh, uh, you know. It's like how 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 maybe she was listening. This is not just a guy that I mean Kathy's the exact same way with Patsy as I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, you know. I know. I think a lot of people have crashed on her. Like, so <laughs> Naughty Andrew, yeah. Jeez. Uh oh, you guys are awful. We can joke around a lot of things, we can never joke around with Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh. I don't know. It's just, it's so funny, like, and I know Kathy because it cracks up this. I think we even get cracked up with the same thing. She'll do that Andy thing or stuff like that, and then just stare at the camera, yeah, like stare into it. It just very, cracks uh, me up every time. I don't know why. But... What is ghoul, Donnie? Ghoul. Is it something that I don't understand? Uh, is a town civil parish? It's your town. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's what I was saying. In general, England uh, is the biggest place in Europe uh, where people from Latvia immigrate to. Some of them are start coming back now, but. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, it's funny how the places like that, and one will go to a town, and then more. Even me from like uh, in Canada, like uh, even though it's the same province, you had people leave the Gas Bay where I grew up, a very small town. They moved to Montreal in a certain area or outskirts, and then one another one comes and stays with them, and then gets a job and gets a place, and then they help another two friends get jobs. The next thing you know, the place is full of them, just because of that same. And I think that happens with a lot of people that are immigrating as well. We're so glad you stayed awake, Kathy. I'm so glad you were here tonight. I know you're a huge fan of Rob as well, so I, that was, I'm really happy you can make it. <laughs> Town of Ghoul sounds lovely. <laughs> Love an epic wrote. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes you can't pick the... Remember in Saskatchewan, all the weird names? Yeah. yeah there, was, there was a town called Elbow. It was a town called Ituna, even though for some ungodly reason it's about 4,000 kilometers away from any body of salt water. <laughs> Donnie, it's a shithole. <laughs> well, there you go. That's cut to the chase. 
Let's answer the question. <laughs> God. Oh my god, maybe Donnie, if you lose the job as being a welder, they might hire you to do tourism or something. <laughs> Don't come, it sucks. <laughs> oh, Gooligans is the nickname for you guys that live there? Oh my god. Like Gulag almost. Oh. Well, yeah, Gooligans. Yeah. Oh my god, almighty. Mm -hmm. See, in, in 2014, one in 30 Latvians were in UK. They don't have any statistics on either of the embassies because people are not registering, apparently. That's a lot. That's so funny. Whose channel is it today? I was in a chat and I said, oh, I'm going to go check out your channel. Audrey said, don't bother. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to promote yourself. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, you're so sweet, Philip. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope so. Yeah. We hope so. They, there's time there's some channels getting way bigger than what we get in the same but you know what we're not in the same genre and i'd rather have what we have any day of the week i'm proud of what we got here with you guys and i hope you guys are proud to be here with it because it's all made because of you guys so it was uh we owe you guys all the time i always say that for what we have yeah see a village is called carlton and we have like towns in quebec called like Carl, see uh, this French spelling of it, Carleton. Club and Epic, I'm glad you had a good laugh tonight. This group of people have actually come together. That's right. And I'm, I'm glad that you're now part of that. I'm so happy to have yeah. you here. Yeah, welcome home, as we say. Yes, that's right, <laughs> 100%. You know, like we're not making money off this, so why get so serious about it? It's, I mean, you got to take your work seriously uh, that you do do on YouTube and all these things. But it's just supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a good feeling. There's enough hard stuff in real life. We don't need it here. So I keep saying that. And I said it tonight right in the camera. These are the golden times. If one of us was ever to make it big in YouTube, it's not going to ever feel like it does right now. So enjoy every moment of it. Yeah, I always refer to Mythical Morning. We used to uh, start watching them when they were still doing it from their kitchen uh, table. Yeah. And then they grew and grew and grew and started to get more boring and boring. Um, and now they, they got picked up by YouTube Red and they get paid to do their shows. And they were on H3 podcast, I think, a couple of months ago. And they yeah. were talking about it. They They don't even get to do their own show the way they want to do it because it's now a production company that does it. And they basically are jumping from one filming to another uh tired busy and not even enjoying what they're doing um and they actually said that they would rather mm -hmm. change it back to where they actually weren't getting all that uh attention and, and money so to say but they actually enjoyed what they were doing um, i studied multimedia integration because i had a chance to go back to school and do something that i truly loved and in a way i crossed the line because i did that and was when i got hired by that music company and as great as that was and i have an amazing experience it's great when something's a hobby but when you get faced with deadlines and writer's block and all these things it really quickly sucks the magic out of it and it just becomes another job so you know it's the old careful what you wish for routine well, yeah, and the more people you get supported by, the more responsibility you have of what you're doing on there, you know. You can't just shoot to the breeze yeah. anymore. Uh, so it's always two sides of it. And, I mean, if you're ready for it, that's fine. But I don't I don't think really uh, those of us who want to, you know, uh, get big and, and start working at YouTube are really thinking about that other side. Yeah. So, well, you know, if we are not earning any money on it or whatever, even if it's a couple cents afterwards, yeah. it's not worth the drama or, uh, you know, big hustle in that side. Just have fun is the best thing to do. So, exactly. Yeah. Marcel, you're so right. Uh, you're happy with what you're doing. Enjoy it. Exactly. It grows on its own. But also, too, and I can't stress enough, because I've seen a lot of this going on for a while. Try not, and I'm not standing up for them, but try not to hate too much and i'm not saying you're doing it but i do see it tonight is the hating on the bigger channels and once again i always use it it's the same as music or anything else it's like you're playing in a club in new york and just hating on everybody that's on the top 40 
Uh, there's some of them there that really earn to get where they are. Mm -hmm. And you can learn from them. Uh, Xenia and I have been an open book about that one. For instance, Peter McKinnon will sing his praises. Now, maybe he might flop tomorrow, but he did. He's the one who, he was his video that got us to fight back in the apocalypse when we had completely given up on this channel. And you can learn from these guys, but not to live vicariously through them. No, and, and like yeah. I like him and he's not the only one. He actually does collaborate with smaller channels and, and you know, if somebody gives a shout out to him, uh, we have seen our Saudi, you know, he comments underneath, uh, yes, let's work together. And they actually do the collab, you know, somebody who has like a couple thousand and Kim who has now two million, like uh, reach like in a, less than a year. Yeah. Uh, and they do a collab and he does that oftentimes and not to blow horn uh at, at his own success but to work with people he you yeah. know let, that's his point is to do what you love yeah and there's more people like him that are bigger channels and and they do that so it depends what you're watching and one other last point on to it don't copy what the big guys are doing get inspired by them get ideas from them but do your own thing use it to enhance and that's nothing wrong it's like when you play guitar you know yeah you hear a guy do a neat little trill. Well, that's great. Pick up that trill, learn it inside and out, but you don't want to learn the whole solo. You want to use that trill in your next solo that you invent, that you write. And, uh, yeah, you know, because it's not... There's lots of things can be learned from people who... Don't forget, a lot of these guys did make their own way. Not all of them were Jake Pauls and just had it handed in their laps. There are some that worked really hard. So I was just reading and Miss Kathy said, what did I miss with Patsy? And I don't, I just try, I don't know. I want to answer it. Uh, and she's a LOL, really funny laughing, just thinking about it. Yeah. They're teasing me tonight, Kathy. That's why I wish you were here earlier because you could have stuck up for me because they're all saying I have a crush on Patsy. <laughs> And Donnie, you already have something original. Yes. You yep. are the one that has to have your own thing going and, you yep. know, it, uh, you're growing with it. So mm. definitely. You know, it's just, and, and Marcel, I agree too. Like, I get what you're saying. It's not coming down on you or anything. And it's not you in particular. There's some, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's some of it's becoming like an excuse for everything that's wrong when it's not. It's, they, Every big YouTuber, and you guys have heard me say this before, we have everybody here in the chat, we're all at different numbers right now in subscribers. And every big YouTuber sat at one moment getting as excited as you did about the last, last mark that you just crossed, whether it's 300, 600, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. They didn't just get up and turn on the screen and have 150,000 or 2 million viewers. So they were in your exact shoes. And really, in a way, they had it harder. And the point is, the adpocalypse opened up the taboo of actually asking somebody to come and look at your channel. Because until adpocalypse, you didn't want to ask many people unless you knew them for, like, weeks. Because you didn't want to get flagged with uh, inappropriate behavior and have your channel struck. So really, in a way, they had it harder than us. And some of them went at it for years. Peter McKinnon was a prodigy. He hit one million in nine months. But it's not like he was sponsored to get there. It was because he does amazing content, really well, really great cinematography. And he did the thing that helped him a lot. And he said to himself, was he did two or three videos, like uh, eight important things you got to keep in your camera bag. By things you can't live out without as a photographer and those stories got picked up by other blogs and from other blogs they went into bigger publications of photography and that's what jump started that's what jump started his channel and yeah it's crazy think of it one million viewers in nine months why did casey neistat start being friends with them because everybody was saying the internet oh they kind of shoot the same that they don't here's a lot more cinematography based than Casey, where Casey's a lot more story-based. And I'm not always the biggest fan of Casey Neistat. I don't hate the guy. I'm not always crazy about his work. But he's an amazing storyteller. 
and he's not a stupid man either. And he's seen where Peter was growing up in the ranks. So what did he do? He joined with him and actually asked him to show him how to shoot better. So you see a guy with almost, what, the time, 8 million rounds? I think the so, time. yeah. We'll say for argument's sake, went to a guy that was at 1.1 million and said, teach me. That's smart. That's not letting your pride or your arrogance get in the way. That's saying, listen, this guy can help me get another level. Even just being associated with him is going to get me to another level. Even though the guy has a lot less views than I am, he's growing at a rapid pace. And the same with us all here. The more we all work together, do collabs, support each other's uh, streams, each other's videos, uh, give great comments. Comments, not like 45, but, oh, I see it. Uh, 224 that you had that balloon in the air when you got the shot that looks amazing if we all do that for each other we all get better we all learn from each other I have a I haven't edited lately but I have tried in all my videos to learn three new tricks uh, three new editing techniques every video it was enough to be obtainable and not enough to uh, that I wouldn't grow and I don't have all the answers. I mean, who you hear so many people lately telling you what to do and trying to jump on your coattails and tell you how this is how you got to do it. This is how you got to do it. We've done pretty good into it, and we're what a, 50, a little over fifteen hundred. No offense, but who the hell am I to tell you how to grow a channel? I don't know how to grow a channel yet, or otherwise I wouldn't be at fifteen hundred. I'd be yeah. at one hundred and fifty thousand. We can just know. share, you know, our own uh, yes. what what we think is okay, but it doesn't mean that we're experts or anything. You're not telling what to do; we're just sharing what we know so far. And That's if right. Know something else? I add to it. And I do learn from you guys, and I do watch what you guys say. I mean, I'm always learning new things from you guys. That's what it is. This is just a co-op, and we're just there to kind of help each other. Uh, we don't want to copy other people. We want to do our own things. But we're lucky that we all have each other enough that we can lean on somebody when we need help. Uh, Panic D was a great example of that because I want to get into OBS. I just don't have the time. And he's like, as soon as you do, let's play around with it together and see how we set it up for Hangouts and everything so we can bring people on to interview. Like, how amazing is that? It's not costing a cent. Yeah. Nothing. And every time I do that, I get a little closer with the guy and we're better supporters and we know each other better. It's nothing but win-win all around like that. Want to grow our channel? Get to meet lots of people so you build a good base and make videos that you think are going to really catch people's eye. You don't have to do every video that way. Keep your creativeness. Don't change for anybody why, uh, unless that's what you want to do. But I wouldn't. But like Peter McKenna did with that eight things that should be in your bag and then think of something like that that can be picked up by bloggers if you're into cars think of what's the greatest thing you can do with cars or uh custom carts is here uh five things to building a cart that everybody should know you know something like that that all cart guys will get into and then other publications that talk about carts will like as well Yeah, but Marcel, you're not clueless. You're what you hit like two grand. You're not clueless at all. You know? Uh, you've you're well on your way. Nobody wants to we've I'm so tired of this whole taboo that's been taught that we gotta call it, you know, golden eagles and hatched babies and all these things. It's called subs, and you need subs to grow. And at first you gotta just bow down and say, you know what? I know you're never going to watch my channel ever again, but sure, I'll sub you, sub me. And you just got to start it off that way. Take advantage that we can do that right now. And once you have a decent following, this is what I do now. Now that I'm over the thousand, now I'm way more selective. I try to go to channels that I like a lot and look at their supporters and see if there's some people in there that might like what I do. But at first, I had to take some. that They're never coming back. They, they came to click a button, and that was the last of them. But you know what? Why cry about it? Why pretend it's called something? It's not caring and sharing on that. It's everybody kind of using each other. But through that, we have a live stream today that's filtered out a lot of those people. And now I have them, we have them, excuse me, coming in here multiple times a week 
with great comments, with great support, and are sharing that not only with me, but with other people in here and that. We're not as big a number as some of the other channels, but I really don't care. I'm happy with the way this is growing. I feel like it's totally healthy growth. And that's what's so cool about the whole process. So to me, this is the only way I can figure out right now at this point to grow, but I'm always listening. And if I find something new, I'm definitely going to jump on board if it makes sense for us. But just don't let everybody tell you what to do with your channel all the time. Do what you think is right for your channel. It's your channel. And you're, most of us are never going to make hardly any money off of this. So why sell everything down the drain for what? An extra 40 uh, subs? It's not worth it. That's right, Panky. It is a, a strong base. This channel can't be what it is, especially this live stream, without you guys. It's as simple as that. You guys have given me the ultimate gift of making it what it is. There's no thanks to me or any in that part. It's, mm -hmm. it's you guys. So, Donnie, you have an amazing night. Love you so much. And you take care thank of you yourself. Thank you for sticking us, uh, with us during your work hours. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being safe. Yes. And uh, thank you again one, last night for your time once yes, again. Get some so, sleep. Yes. It's such a pleasure having you here. Well. Well, you know, it's just the way it is. So thanks, Flub Epic. I don't know if it's words of wisdom. It's just the way I feel about it. So, you know. So tonight we're going to be, uh, tomorrow, uh, mm -hmm. well, almost tonight, we're going to be back uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, as we always are, from Monday to Saturday, um, 8 p.m. Eastern. And on Sunday, we're going to be guesting at the Corn Life's uh, yep. network channel. Uh, they have new uh, series calling a, a date with Brooke, I think it's yep. called. So um, uh, we've been uh, long kind of talking about getting together and now they are married and newly went. So that's we right. get to be, I guess, the first, the first guest. guest so that's pretty cool. Uh, on their newlywed date night. Yeah, so we're just um, excited to get together and just chat and have some laughs. Uh, so someday we're going to yep. be on, just not on our channel. Natural Journey, we love you guys as well. Yeah. I love all of you guys. You're amazing people. Club and Epic, no problem. Real life comes first. Yeah. Anytime you share with us, we greatly appreciate you. Just be safe when you're working, and we'll be here for replays and yeah. more Follow us on Twitter so then you can see where we're at if we're not on, but we're here every night, Monday to Saturday. Panic D videos, 5 p.m. Eastern. Come to our live stream, tasting some brownies, and you can see how to tell if your house is haunted. So definitely check these guys out. They have an amazing, amazing live stream. They're amazing people. You're uh, this much. Uh, Thanks for the message link and educating us on the. Okay, let plug. me send you a couple links now. So this link is uh, just a few minutes longer. Uh, this link is to add us to your conversation on YouTube, YouTube Messenger. If you don't know how to do it, skip to the afterwards at the very beginning of our live stream. Andrew showed how to do it, and then uh, I'm gonna give you the link for Sunday. Um, Uh, Philip, you're, uh, thank you so much. You make us awesome, my friend. Oh, uh, Natural Journey says they're sorting their visas out. Ooh, oof. is it not going well? I hope it's going well. I hope it's not too much trouble. Yeah. Marcel, the pleasure was all ours. Thank you so much for being in here. It's always nice to have you. And guys, I hope nothing I ever take comes off as preachy because that's the exact opposite of what I want. I'm just reminding you guys that you're individuals and you're amazing people and you guys can do it on your own terms. That's all I hope I'm coming across as. You're smart people. You don't need anybody telling you what to do, including me. <laughs> Oh. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Preacher man. You know, Flubbing Epic, you're another channel. I'm glad that I'm really happy that you're here and you've come back. It's, uh, uh, you're a great fit. I lost the link. What happened? Oh, they're looking, they're a natural journey of finding photos to prove we are in a relationship. Yeah. I oh, know all about we that. We did all that. This like stuff. 
Oh my All God. the ticket stubs and God forsake anything that ticket nobody stubs from a ferry in Talons like a couple of years and yeah oh that God. nobody ever saves even yeah. when they are in relationship nobody saves that yeah. if somebody ever has all that I think they're fake yeah. because yeah. nobody saves the stuff that you have to like we yeah, yeah when we were doing our like my citizenship it was just just crazy but worth it but yeah. Panty videos, ponies, and vloggers, right back at, right back at you guys. Same thing, right back at you. It's uh, we're all in this together, guys. But never lose your individuality. It's because I see that happening a lot, and that was happening, and it drove me crazy to watch. You know, you really don't know my wife. Oh, well, she has everything. <laughs> Panic D says. Yeah, we're talking about collecting things before too. Oh, see, Xenia would keep. She's gotten so much better over the years. I gotta say, I'm very proud of her. Because I, I, my, I always wanted my house to look like a Sears catalog, like the bookcase with the three decorative books, just to say there's something onto it. But I have like a kind of, I guess, like an aversion of OCD. And uh, when I was a truck driver, I realized how much I couldn't deal with clutter. Because I I can't even put my thoughts together. Like if stuff is out of place. Like right now down below, it's because we had to move everything at the last minute. We got two throw pillows down on the floor with a blanket in between it. And if I haven't looked at it 30 times tonight, I haven't looked at it at all. It's driving me crazy. Okay, I posted the link now. This is the link. You can just uh, go over and press the bell button. You can, And then it's going to hopefully remind you. On Sunday, that we are gonna be uh, on the Corn Life Network on Sunday, so you don't have to. Wait. We're off on Sunday. This is true. Sorry. And, uh, this Sunday we're gonna be on. There we go. Yeah. Yes, Andrew, that's what I want. My wife, not so much. I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. learning. I, I'm <clears throat> better. She's and and I know with Xenia like. She didn't want to see things go to like I, I just when it gets too cluttered, I could just start tossing everything. It's, and I get where for her it was once more when we started donating more to charities and stuff like that. Yes. everything out. It helped a lot because I can throw out things. I think it, it it was a lot of also where we grew up as well, because you know, didn't have much, but also couldn't get much in the stores because of the Soviet Union, yeah. you know, especially when I was very little. So we kind of uh, saved lots of things just in case because you couldn't just go and buy it if you didn't have it, you know. So I think it kind of was from there. And, and then throwing out was kind of like wasting things. But now when I know that somebody else can benefit it, well, why do I need two ladles or whatever, you know? To, yeah. uh, so it's so much easier to give stuff because I know somebody else can can use it. I don't like wasting either. It's just the point where I feel like I overwhelmed by everything. I just got to get it out. And even at my desk when I worked at the music company and stuff like that, it would be cluttered and I'd have a deadline and I knew I was under the gun. I get such writer's block and then stressed about it because my head feels like my surroundings. And if the surroundings are all in chaos, I feel like I'm in chaos. So I have to stop everything, put away all the stuff. Even if it's in a drawer, like I know there's a mess. I can't just dump everything in a drawer and close it. So, uh, and a truck driving truck long haul really teaches you that because there was a now a laptop's not so bad, I suppose. But back then there was a ton of paperwork and doing it all in such a small confined space. If you don't keep it clean, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed. Uh, phobic, uh, we figured out it was how we were raised. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Oh my god almighty. Guys, we're gonna let you go for tonight. It's been such a pleasure. You guys are awesome. Never forget that. Your channels are awesome and your talent's awesome. Don't ever let anybody tell you what to do with it. Like a parent to a child, you know it better than anybody else. And uh we love you lots, and uh, oh, we had somebody just say, "Arcade amusement." Oh man, I like your stuff enough. I love one junk drawer too. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. Unfortunately, it becomes two after a while. Yeah, so that's the part that I don't like. Mm -hmm. But it's good to have at least one corner. That's for sure. 
Well, we have to end this time. Yep. So we'll be uh, on in less than 24 hours. We'll be yeah. back again at 8 Stick p.m. Stick around tomorrow with us, 8 p.m. Eastern. Come back and spend your Saturday night with us. It's yep. going to be raining in Montreal tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll need you guys' as company. So if you can make it, that'll be great. Love to share with you. Take care, guys. Cheers and keep creating. Love yous all. Bye now. <laughs>